Yeah. It says starting recording, so... There we go, now it is recording. So there we go. So yeah, this is preamble shit, so we can just go from here, sort of thing. So... Because last time I didn't tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just started, I was like, what? I've been recording for the last 20 minutes. You fucking what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it worked out well, so... Mm. But yeah, we'll do this shit as we normally do, so... Right. Would I be able to take sort of like first spot on like the opening segment? Oh. Go for it now. It was recording. Oh. Go for it. Anyway, oh, really? yes. Where's we'll, where's we'll fucking start it? Why not? Yes, you are listening to RAD. The RAD podcast for, you know, Back from the Dead, wherever we've been, you know, we're back. Yay! Uh, I am your host, captain of the ship, whatever you want to call me. Allegedly, you know, sexy, definitely stupid. It's Paul Flinders, followed by the man who likes to stow away. Oh. It's Lewis Ogden. Hello there. Hello. Yes, it's me. It's, it's weird. Away. You it's can't weird. make him sound more like an illegal immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, well, there's, there's a reason why I have sort of like an intro, just sort of like being able to stow away more times than illegal immigrants trying to get from Calais to Dover. This is it. We all we know the backstory to this. So. Oh yeah. Go listen to the library of uh, other podcasts in our sort of like stable, and you'll understand that. But yeah, also, during... yes, yeah, so we we also have a very shiny man here. His name is. He's not very dark, but he's Anthony. Anthony Dark. Yeah, is that Anthony? Blackpool is back. Is that, is that Anthony? I couldn't tell with the light, light bouncing off his head. I was going to say. <laughs> All right, fucking hell. We're about one minute in. I've been rinsed already. Shit. <laughs> the man it's with an Phoenix. upside down head. <laughs> I've, I've grown this beard out, and uh, that joke is becoming. Well, I used to use it on Tim Howard. Um, God bless him. Uh, I'm slowly realising I can use it on myself now, which is brilliant. <laughs> Absolute barrels of laughs every uh, every time I look in the fucking mirror. <laughs> yeah, it's a very impressive beard. I'll give you that. You know, Thank very much. Just... Speak of impressive beards, we have a debutante, shall we say, on the R.A.D. podcast. He has been on this network before. You may know him as Rogar McLeod, the paladin the sorcerer. But right here, it's James Bunkle. How are we doing? Billy the boy. Billy the boy, Bunkle, even. To give me his actual name. Yes. Making his debut tonight. We've uh, we we know very little about this man. He's had copious amounts of experience on uh, <laughs> on other significant podcasts, but he's made it to the big time, so he's got big shoes to fill. Yes, yes, I am here. James D. Bunkle is here to put the world to rights and to uh, slate well almost everybody. Be afraid. Be very afraid. God, James you couldn't have sounded more Bunkett. menacing if you tried. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, where? It's what you got to do to survive on the mean streets of Blackpool, even though they're empty at the minute, but there you go. <laughs> Except for the hookers. They're still open. They are. I do not know. They are open in many ways well, you, more than you one. You obviously know for a reason. Because <laughs> you're the one that just brought it up. <laughs> well, you know. You, you, you go. I go down those these streets rather frequently. Blackpool bird where? watching. That's what it is. Blackpool <laughs> bird watching. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how how they haven't been closed down by any policeman who's walking by. I do not know. Oh, they're probably, no, probably, probably, probably closed probably. down. The fact that they're, they're at risk of murder. God knows what else. Drugs. <laughs> everything else. I I, I doubt a, a, a bloody pandemic is going to do it for him. Do you really think, mate? <laughs> Hellfire. It's well, not like they're unionised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, the last thing they've got to worry about is a little cough. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's coming from the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just, I was just, I just happened to be going past, and I was just thinking to myself, like, how was, how was a, a police officer not just gone right, two grand fine, two grand fine, two grand fine? And it's just like you probably just got it in the handbags and he can just put it on you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'll just turn it back in the next half hour. <laughs> They're probably just sort of like, yeah, two hundred quid under, and we'll say no more about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a free beat to blind eye. <laughs> Guaranteed. It's a, it's a proper Blackpool, that for you. Come on. Yeah. 
for Blackpool. Don't come to Blackpool. Absolutely. Right. Well, don't come to Blackpool yet. No, not don't... yet. No, t- no, never come to Blackpool because they'll pro- knowing your luck, they'll probably come with the fucking um, all oh, whatever the whatever the big fucking festival is where all the dickheads and scumbags of the world come to your shores. The season. The um, fuck. Yes. <laughs> the whole season. <laughs> or whatever it's called. The what event? The f- you know the f- when the farmers show up. Oh yeah, that got their band. Weekend or whatever it is, and they like steal people's cars and all yes, kinds of shit. Yes, yes. If we all do, we do we remember my epic rant on the farmers' weekend? We yes. do. Yes, that was that was stuff of legend. That I think I went into like a twenty-minute tirade. It was amazing. Go after farmers really sums it up. Really, I mean, oh no, 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 no. No, young farmers. I'll, you know, young oh, farmers. Right. I, 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 they're, they're fair game. We're hard-working farmers that put food on our tables, absolutely fine. But when you come to our town and think, I know what I'll do. I'll not rub the keys out of somebody's car and chuck them down the road because it's funny. Yeah, fair game. Go <laughs> fuck yourself. Basically, Blackpool's a shit Amsterdam. That, that should be the slogan. That that's, should be the slogan. You are now entering Blackpool, shit Amsterdam. I, I I wouldn't say that. I would say it's an Amsterdam that's smeared in shit. I'm mean, brutally honest with you. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we are back. It's been a while. A bit of I've, I've missed doing this. If I'm brutally honest with you, it's just it's with what's been going on in the world. It's hard. It's it's hard to find motivation sometimes to do these things, and you know, I've been like I say, I've been doing this. Like I say, we're doing Phoenix Pod for. Well, since the lockdown began, really, when you think since about the very it, t- like just before the very first one. Yeah, I mean, me, me, it was just me and um, me and Ant, uh, not me and Ant, me and uh, Adam to begin with, and it was sort of like um, literally the day the show got released, and the day after Boris gave us a rollicking and locked us down. So, well, he can fuck off, <laughs> Dune. <Doom. laughs> and fuck that's the politics that. covered on this episode, but. Hey. Um, <laughs> I'm but from yeah. Derry. Don't talk to me about politics. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, our politics is: you've got a petrol bomb, I've got a petrol bomb. Let's fucking have it. <laughs> That's politics in Derry. There you go. We're covered in Ireland as well now. There you go. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, and I think we need to kick it off with some sort of topic. And I think, you know, the person who can. So who can kick this off is the uh, the man who likes, you know, the man who asked first. I think it's Lewis Ogden. It is indeed. Uh, the only reason that I took sort of like precedent of having first segment is because, God damn it, I'm, I'm in need of a drink. And oh, yeah. There's a, uh, there's uh, like weeks ago, like maybe a month or like six weeks ago. I would say six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. Um, there was a particular promotion that Brewdog where, um, there you go, there it is. There's a particular promotion that Brewdog were doing of uh, just basically giving you a free um, four-pack of lager. Cough, of cough, this. pay for postage, cough, cough. Yeah. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> even then, the postage is only like two quid. For, well, this, you know. this is it. I mean, I was naughty and ordered it in two names and got two packs. But, um, two, two different addresses. <laughs> two different addresses, but I got them. Uh, actually, no, tell a lie. No, it was at the same address. They just didn't check. So what you could have done is just done multiple <laughs> emails. Oh, I wish I'd have known that. <laughs> and then I didn't realise it until I'd done it. And then I, was, I don't know if I told you or not, but I must have done. It's you could have literally got like... No, because nobody else percent. did that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nice of, you, nice of you to tell us that, Paul. <laughs> I, I apologise. I haven't even arrived. You cannot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you used to wait for yours, Uncle. I am still waiting for mine. Oh, no. See, I was I wasn't expecting mine until um, Monday, and they actually dropped it off on Sunday. So you know, I think I was the first person right, to get all of their order, wasn't I? I think, or maybe Alan, maybe possibly beat us to it. Possibly, possibly. Um, but, but yeah, there's the reason I want to take precedent over it is because there's a new drink that I've not tried. I'm gagging mm-hmm. for a drink. It's been a while since we've done one. A taste test here on That's- RAD. Absolutely, a classic RAD podcast taste test. And I've got a sneaky feeling, I have a sneaky feeling, this is actually going to be a pleasant one, which is unheard of on this podcast. That is a glass. That is a glass. 
Nice he little uh, se- glass. nice little secret Santa gift from uh, one of my work colleagues. Nice uh, little. No, it it's, a, it's a cracker. That's last. It's my match day glass. That. I see. <laughs> see, I'm just doing it the old fashioned Blackpool way, and just supping it straight out the tinny. But it, it, I, have, it, I, I could get a glass, but fuck you it. Okay, so you fuck the it. Dark side stout here and there. Ah, you have your own stout, don't you, sir? I brew my own beer now. Yes, realizing how much money it's gonna. I can save me in the long run. I decided <laughs> to, to bring me own shit. <laughs> now, I seem to remember asking you, Paul, if yes. this was closer to a beer or an IPA. And you said this was sort of like closer to an IPA. It's sort of like a slap bang in the middle. Um, I mean, uh, the spoiler alert, I've already drank some of this. and uh, I had a couple of cans and it is... It's, uh, I'll save my opinion until Lewis has tried his, but mm. I've got the a only reason, here. The only reason I was asking that is because... I, well, for the most part, bar like one or two here and there, I absolutely fucking detest IPAs. I just mm. think, it, I, I just think whoever whoever came up with IPAs is just sort of like, man, I like beers and I like the taste of cocktails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beer that tastes like a cocktail, but isn't actually a cocktail. And thus the term IPA was fucking introduced. Psychopaths, yes. psychopaths. Yeah, yeah. psychopaths are what I'll call What's wrong? What's wrong with just sort of like yeasty hop? Mm. Well, not even hoppy beer because I, 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 too many too many hops spoils it for me. I, I agree. What's the matter with good old fashioned lager? So, I mean, there's there's there's, there's a fair amount of bubbles coming up from it. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice and carbonated. It smells like you know a beer essentially. You know, a lager. It smells like because there's a particularly like craft beer place in the middle of like um Southport town centre called Tap and Bottles. And mm-hmm. like I've not been there well, I've not been in there for years and years and years because it's not really my my place. Um but there was a there's like a particular like I think it's like German or Polish beer called like Pilsner or Pils mm. or something. Yes. Pils, Pils, Pils was short. Pils, yeah. And I remember always really liking that because it was it was basically like a lager with like a tiny, teeny tiny little bit of a hoppy ta- aftertaste to it, mm. but wasn't like overpowering. So this is what I'm hoping. All I'm going to say is I think you're going to be partying. Fan Dabby Dozy, because I've got another three cans. If there you go. Off. Okay. So Ching, I'll Ching, give it a go. Yep. Well, just, well, just to remember, just to say before a bit of detail, before we do try, it says it is actually sort of like a sustainable beer. So for every pack, of, four pack that you buy, we plant to tree. And it's made from leftover fresh bread. With uh, they add their own little bit of yeast to it, but they don't use as much yeast because they're using the bread mm-hmm. to go with it. And it's yes. yeah, and it's it's only powered by wind turbines. So the machinery that they use is only sort of like powered by Brewdog wind turbines on their own like sort of site. Yeah, that's mm. a good shout. Mm. So it's basically it's carbon neutral and it's getting rid of waste. So mm. you're saving the earth by getting drunk. I love it. Bizarre. Um, <laughs> as you were, as you started giving your description, I just had like my mouth around the glass and yeah. just sort of like paused. I look yeah. like the, I look like the end credits of sort of like Police Squad or like the Naked Gun. <laughs> sort of like, there, like that. Everybody else is moving around in the background, but I'm just sort of like still, still like that. <laughs> I, I think I think we've delayed it too long for you now, Lewis. I think yeah, the anticipation sort of going for a big so. swig. Go for a big swig and enjoy. I know I will. It's look a nice drop, I must say. Mm. That's not bad, that. Told you. Pretty nice. I was expecting some sort of weird taste. Oh, they've used bread in it. So I thought, well, I don't know why I was expecting a weird taste, but I was, but it's really pleasant. There is a bit of heavy... You, you can tell they've added a little bit more yeast into it because there's mm. a bit of a sort of like a heaviness to it. Yeah. And then obviously you've got sort of like the after aftertaste to it as well, but that's not too bad, that. Yeah, it's not too heavy. It's very, it's easily it's very drinkable, isn't it? So it's not sort of one of them like piss weak ones where you can just sup it like pop. But it's it, it, yeah, it reminds me of a um, excuse me. There's a particular sort of like brew dog that they have on tap that sort mm. of like has like a like it's like a baby blue like label to it. it tastes similar to that actually. Mm. I mean, I remember having um, a brew dog lager many, 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 many years ago. And it was at that horrible place called Weatherspoons. And um, <laughs> cheap though. Oh, it was cheap. It was one fifty a pint. And I was I was supping away at it. And it was uh, called This Is Lager. 
and it was quite nice, and it reminds me a little bit life of that. It's, mm. it's a bit more hoppy than that, but it's nice. Yeah. I mean, it, the the one I was drinking, I don't know if it says it was fucking watered down or not. I don't know, but it drank, it drank more like pop. It was nice, but mm. like I say, I could I could get behind that. And not only oh, that, it's, oh, it's punk, I, punk IPA. That's what it sort of tastes like. Oh yeah, that's what it sort of tastes like. Punk IPA. So the mm. only IPA you will probably like is punk IPA. Yeah. <laughs> and even then it's probably only sort of like a pint here or there i could i, I couldn't do a, a, a day or a night drinking session on it because i'd just no. be i'd be legless i'd be out the pub within half an hour it's the same with this with me with me it's nice i could probably do a couple of cans of it but after a while i think it'd get a bit heavy yeah um so i'd have to go on something a bit lighter maybe carlsberg or something like that carlsberg Robert, yeah my own piss. <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind carlsberg because it's cheap so you can get cheap, you can get better tasting lager for probably a, a, a tiny bit more. Freaking mm. hellfire! I'd rather rather pay <laughs> rather pay like an extra couple of pence and get like a proper fucking beer. Don't say Carling Carlsberg. Oh, God. God. Only if it's only if it's on tap. Mm. I don't mind Carling, but mind you, I don't I, I don't mind Foster's either. So you know. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm, maybe I'm a bit of an animal. I mean, I drink. Um, I like having stuff like cores and things like that. They're my sort of go-to mm. drinks because they're a bit lighter. But yeah, that's me. I say, well, if, if I'm trying to uh, have a, a whole night nightly sesh sort of thing on lager and stuff, I like usually something like cores or something like that. Mm. So. No, but yeah, that is a. Great big massive gorilla thumbs up for me. Absolutely, I'll give that a thumbs up as well. Uh, I, I, I know Adam had a um, had a taste of it as well, and he said it was very nice as well. So that's three thumbs up. So, <laughs> Uncle, as soon as delivery comes for you, mate, it's your it'll be your turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it ever arrives. <laughs> oh, it will. If not, complain. I want my free beer. <laughs> <laughs> I want my delivery feedback. Yeah. yeah, I want my one pound ninety nine. No. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> they don't call me the delivery man for nothing. <laughs> See, I know all about deliveries, me. Yeah. <laughs> Your package power drive, you. Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, it's a bit. You know, keep it old school. Keep it old school. Keep it the pay per views. And- Standard pile driver will do. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why do you have to mess with the pile driver? At the end of the day, if you're going to do a pile driver, you know, that should be the finish. Oh, for fuck's Absolutely. sake, come on. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> webs. <laughs> and once per show as well. Once per driver. Show. <laughs> oh, God, you got talking about stupid, crazy moves. What about the one that we saw earlier today? I was about to say, what about the one that you've got as your background? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that one, that one. Yes, yeah, so a little bit a little to say. Obviously, you know we're doing this on webcam, recording it, and what have you. And if you listen to uh, the Phoenix Pod, you know I like to have a bit of fun with my backgrounds. Uh, <laughs> tonight's tonight's little background is a, a certain wrestler called uh, Nia Jax, who had a, did this, who was on the receiving end of a certain move or counter or whatever it was. I didn't watch it close enough, and. She seems to land sort of tailbone first on the hardest part of the ring. He says in air quotations, and no, she, she just sort... sat. No, she just sat down on the ring because let's be honest, she can't actually jump. Yeah. <laughs> she... she can't. She can't. She can't. She can't. Jeez. Well, the thing is, I think the thing is, though, she can't wrestle either. So you know, you know, it's but one I of them. What, I tell you what, she can do. She can throw a hell of a punch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not wrestling, though, is it? Let's be oh, honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she yeah, kind of landed backside first on the edge of the apron and sat down, whatever you want to call it. And she kind of waddled, waddled away, can only describe it as, and uh, shouted screaming, <laughs> sorry, shouted and screaming, my hole. <laughs> Which is uh, up there in the annals of time to go along with uh, Bubba Ray Dudley's My Balls 
And uh, I believe Rebel in TNA saying, my vag. Yes, oh, yeah. so yes you did. About that. The triple threat there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we have our triple ta- triple threat tag team for the, um, <laughs> whatever it is, trio, trio's belt, whatever it was, somewhere, or whatever that stupid belt that fucking Willie Siegel had, which was a th- British three-way tag team thing, and which expect disappeared. Them, expect them all to be members of Retribution by the end of the month. Absolutely. <laughs> Get, like, no, oh god! But yeah, but, but yes, but we have this uh, this lady screaming it. It was a speech bubble, basically over my head. It looks like I'm looking at the camera now. It looks like Nia Jax is trying to eat my head. Basically, so for, for non wrestling fans, what essentially you've got is a woman behind you trying to eat your head, shouting "my hole." <laughs> Either that, or she's waiting for something, given the way that her mouth is positioned. Uh, I wouldn't argue if she was waiting for mine, but uh... was, they, they, are some, they are some nostrils on her. Jesus Christ! Fucking hell! Just, like, it's, just it's another like... hole to try and fit it in, and that, so that's all that is. Drive under uh, things like that under, under the River Mersey, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> hell, <of> fire! <laughs> Yeah, you, have, you have to pay a toll to pick your nose. <laughs> <laughs> depends if you're going under the bridge, or it depends oh, if you're going under in the tol- tunnel under the river. Trust me, I'm not going under that fucking bridge. Oh my god! I was going to say, like, I always associate Nia Jax with you know the shifty-eyed looking dog from The Simpsons. Yes. Oh yes. no! Oh, because of the old intro <laughs> that she had, right? <laughs> Wait, wait, focus Have on the face. Have you not seen that goes, meme? Have you not goes, seen that meme where just interchange? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> I believe it was the uh, the good fine folks at uh, OSW Review that um, referenced. Well, well, may have popularized that meme, and then somebody's obviously sort of like taking it and just run to the hills with it. <laughs> the episode with uh, Mel Gibson. Mm. Last year. Yep. I may have to start sort of listening to old, uh, old school review. Oh, they're on bit. They're on YouTube. Ah, I'll get it going. If they're on Spotify, it's even brilliant because I can. What I tend to do, especially why, I, like I said to, to mention to the um, GTMP lot a lot, is I do a lot of endurance racing on the Xbox. And I like sticking a podcast on. Mm. A nice long podcast is even better. So. So I'll be hopefully if they're on Spotify, I'll give them a go and do it that way. Um, but yeah, now. yeah, but yeah, we was there was a spot before. Um, and it's 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 probably going to boil Bunkle's pee a little bit, shall we say? Um, Sir, where even we... before we move on to that, after this happened to Nia Jax, Lana then apparently is strong enough to throw oh, yes. her through a barricade. I'm sorry. We do not watch wrestling to watch the women wrestle. We do not. Bloody hell. (laughs) We don't need the women to be doing spots like that. Because then when the men do it, it means nothing. Stupid. All right, Colin Farrell, calm down. Fucking hell. I was about about to say, freaking hell, Bunkle's evolved from fucking Jim Cornette into Hardcore Holly. (laughs) <laughs> sort of like going, women don't pay t- fans don't pay to see women wrestle they t- they pay for tits and asses and your point well <laughs> i well i don't right. i well i don't going to segue off into something really I'd, really fucking different soon. <laughs> i'd argue i'd argue that sort of like you know it can be done properly if the women can actually wrestle when in actuality the two women involved cannot wrestle yeah. true you ever notice the best, the, the the greatest comment, you like the greatest. What's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's not a comment. Uh, the greatest saying. Yeah, well, well, the compliment. That's the word I'm looking for. That you can pay to a woman, she sells like a guy. What's yeah? Raya Jackson you mean? No, no, but I'm just saying. Like, look, look at look at the the best women wrestlers right, that you can think of. Uh, I'll use Ray Ripley as the example. Yeah. She sells like a guy. It's believable. She commands the attention. Fucking Lana. Come on. I would it's, argue. It's, I would argue that's the no argument from me. Get no arguments from me. All right. Um, 
I just genuinely think, though, that's down to basic talent, whether it's male or female, whether you can sell or not. you got people, you know, that, for example, oh, there was a great one uh, where you see, like, people like Will Ospreay and people like that, where they just bounce around like a bouncy ball. They get hit by a fucking massive clothesline by the biggest guy in the ring, and then all of a sudden they jump up like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that's a whole other story. Well, that's <laughs> about, you're talking about selling, and it's like, yeah, but women are guilty of that too. You know what I mean? Men, men are just as guilty as women as not selling. It's all the, yeah, all all wrestlers who work that way are as guilty as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are guilty of that, I should say. Well, this is it. I might have got my words twisted, but that's what I meant. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I put it. I just put it down as a fucking lack of talent thing. Like you know, you could like for example, you could pair like I don't know. I mean, I'm not out of the loop with wrestling. I mean, I can't even pull names out it's, of that. It it'll be a lack of people behind the scenes who don't know the fundamentals of wrestling. Mm-hmm. It is because because let's be honest, you have the likes of um, you know, as as well. I can't even say like people who might be backstage at WWE because I don't really particularly watch it. But can I just uh, jump could... in and say this is mainly a WWE problem? No. Uh, the... no, 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 no. I'm no. sorry. Have you, uh, 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 yeah, 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 the fucking. Well, I'm not calling them the young books because they ain't fucking young. I'm talking about the. Wi- I'm talking about women wrestlers at the minute. In terms have of you, the talent. Have you have you seen the lack of talent in fucking AEW as well? You've got one talented wrestler and you don't fucking use her. Which one's that? <laughs> she's not even yours hang on you, oh god oh my no I'm not even going to no I'm not going to tonight no. the, thing, not this podcast this, is the, the thing I'll say <laughs> the thing I'll say they've got people behind the scenes the likes of Arn Anderson and Sting who have wrestled in sort of like the area where selling has been a main point to get over the importance and you know the the, the fundamentals of wrestling Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem like they're being utilised properly. Agreed. 100% agreed. Because, because I tell you one person that is absolutely desperately missed from WWE backstage, who passed away like a few months ago, Pat Patterson. Definitely. Amen. Amen. Because, mm-hmm. because you, you go and look at both Royal Rumble matches from this year and none of the current roster stands out. All of the big spots... Went to all of the, all of well, all of the part timers in the legends. They yeah. were the only people who shone the most. Yeah, everybody was... else, everybody else was just an afterthought. But the, the thing is, you can say that's been a problem with WWE forever. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, if you talk about backstage at the WWE, there was only one person that I know is backstage at WWE, and that's Michael Hayes. Um, but Michael Hayes has always been a joke, <laughs> and he hasn't yeah. got the, he hasn't got the Hardys, the Dudleys, and Edging Christian to go and say, "What are you doing, Marvel Ladder Kid?" Exactly. Yeah. Don't yeah. make a name for yourself. <laughs> the rest of them are all Stephanie's people's people. Stephanie's hired as head of creative <laughs> to come in and are comedy writers. They write dramas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're all Ivy League this and that. Not a single one of them ever worked in the wrestling business. Not a single one of them know anything about how to book a wrestling match. Yeah? Just... And they're the people who are coming up with our storylines and telling wrestlers, air quotes, for a lot of them, what, how to wrestle. What to do. That, that's the fundamental problem with WWE. Nobody stands out because everybody's given scripted material so you can't stand out. I... Written by morons. I've... I've... I was listening to something the other day, I think it was on What Culture, and what was telling to me about what they said was, in the past there's always been your top guys, your, your, your middle of the pack guys, and obviously your lower card guys. That sort of disappeared. If you look at that, yeah. uh, especially the raw roster now, yeah. um, Dame, they've got the likes of Damien Priest coming up, uh, Punishment Martinez in Ring of Honor, if I was Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the likes of him, they've got Keith Lee, all the bleeding uh, retribution lot, um, Seth Rollins. Uh, the, the list goes on. They're all bunched up 
in this one singular ball of shit. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's no distinguished uh, roles that anyone has anymore. So these lot fight for the Intercontinental title. Or these lot are main, your main carders and they fight for the, the WWE title. Yeah. Or... The t- there's no t- there's no solid tag team division yeah. either, and it's argue... a problem now that WWE are just buying everybody, and for some reason, and I can't figure myself. The biggest asset WWE have had in the last, I'm going to push it and say five years, would be NXT. That's WWE's biggest asset in terms of pro wrestling fans. If you're appealing to pro wrestling fans, their biggest um, asset is NXT. If well, you're a wrestling was, fan, was I, it? Was it was NXT. Well, well, that's oh, what I mean. Was yeah. NXT? <laughs> so I, I doubt if you're a wrestling, if you're a pro wrestling fan, you at the minute would want to watch, can watch Monday Night Raw for three hours. I doubt you can do that. I can barely do it. I just watch fucking highlights. Um, or you can watch SmackDown. I don't see how you can do it. No disrespect to the, the wrestlers themselves. It is a poorly written, scrambled together. It's like the, the, they've got the writers of Lost together. The, <laughs> it, that's what I mean. The writers of Lost. Lost was a very popular TV show got way back when, a few years ago now. And basically what happened was they wrote the first series and the advice that I could have... The, the first series was amazing. And the advice I could give to them back then was don't write a TV show if you don't know where you're going with it. And right now, everyone who writes for WWE doesn't know where they're going with it. They because don't know who's who or what's what. There's a, there's a very good reason for that, because the person that they're writing for has about as much um, patience have- with long-term booking as I do for, like, you know, people trying to defend, I don't know, sort of like Gina Carano. Yeah, so to, to, yeah. to, you know, to be topical. That's yeah. about sort of like his not... attention span. That's about his yeah. patience. So you see now. I, I, I can understand the frustration, but yeah. I, at the same time, I do have sort of like sympathy for these, you know, these writers because they'll I... probably have like a first draft of everything and then sort of like, you know, a couple of days later, Mr. Vinnie Mack will say, I don't like this, pal. You've got to change it. And, you know, they have to go, Aah! So they have to go fucking scrambling, changing this, there, and everywhere. Whereas, well, I, mean, I mean, sort of like to bring up to bring to bring up OSW review again. They've um, very recently just finished an arc of like doing a lot of new generation stuff, and they were documenting the feud between Bret Hart and his brother Owen Hart, and that is sort of like it's it, it's an example of sort of like long term booking. Because they sort of like had a program that lasted from Survivor Series 1993, which around about November time, up until SummerSlam of 1994, which is around about sort of like August. So that's like a, I don't know, like a nine, nine, ten month nine, program. Nine, ten months, yeah. Ten months. Something like that. And it has twists, it has turns, but it has one goal at the end of it of just yeah. sort of like, you know, yeah. And they tell this story from, from beginning to end. And for the most part, it's fucking phenomenal. And it's just sort of like you have that as an, as an example. You have sort of like a, the mega powers explode. You know, Macho Man, Randy Savage yeah. and Hulk Hogan. That lasted from WrestleMania 4 to the main event of WrestleMania 5. Like, yeah. you know, it's the it's this thing of sort of like long-term booking that WWE for the most part can't do because the very person that they're writing for changes his minds like three or four times every fucking week yeah yeah no i agree and you know I, it, it's i, I want to say I, I don't know how much say he has in nxt because nxt has fallen off a cliff and i don't i don't know whether it's because it's suddenly now on actual tv and not just on the network whether it when it moved to two hours, do you think it going up against AEW is a a, 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 no. a telling point with they between? Don't... I think. Do you not think he's a little bit? No. I, I don't... think it's very stupid of them putting up their greatest asset against something that it's 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 it's, it's not even a war. I don't even think it comes into his consideration. No. I understand no. what you're saying because it's yes, competition. It is a detriment. It is a detriment to NXT to put it up up on a network 
on basically on TV rather than AEW. But the next day, it's on the WWE Network. So just watch AEW and then go watch NXT the next day when you. They sell the WWE Network. Yeah, so it's now cheaper. It costs you four ninety nine a month rather than nine ninety nine a month. But at Why? the same time, the same time as well, when you're getting put on like, excuse me, nationally syndicated television, its ratings are going to are going to become a factor. Like particularly mm-hmm. with sort of like you know, and you know, Vince McMahon, one of his sort of like you know, carings in sort of like nowadays wrestling is getting the best yeah. ratings as possible. Yeah. So you know, of course, he's going to have sort of like more. Well, this is more of my pa- my pie pal. Other than sort of like you know Triple H just going, I'm trying to run sort of like you know a competent, yeah, good wrestling promotion here, and he's just sort of like eh, whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, like I say, I understand, I understand, the, you know what you're saying, but you know, to me, it's just, I don't want to say it's the availability of it that makes it fail because it's not. I mean, you still have to wait a month before you can watch an episode of SmackDown. On the on the network, mm. but NXT you can watch it the next day. Yeah. So it airs on TV next day. It's available on the network. So if you want to watch both, you might as well watch AEW live if you're there, and then just catch yep. up on the net on NXT on the network. You don't even have to DVR it. Whatever the call. Yeah, it. there is that. You know. And what makes me laugh about AEW? What people are talking about saying that AEW are winning in the fucking ratings war, this, that, and the other. And I think to myself, yeah, we're beating AWW. It's like saying, yeah, in Formula One, says, yeah, you're beating a Mercedes, but that Mercedes is attached to a fucking Williams. Yeah, oh, it's the third string. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, d- I don't like people that mental promotion because mm. that's what it is. Yeah, so, it's, 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 so Finn a... Balor's in developmental. Yeah. To help out, to raise, well, uh, yeah. To help out, he's not Dallas developmental. I don't know. Two smalls be on Raw. They're too small. They wrestle a niche style. They wrestle a niche style that suits the NXT brand. I would argue. That's not what people want to watch. I would argue that That's NXT, it. NXT, it started off as a developmental brand, but then you sort of like get around, sort of like. 2014, 2015, when they had the likes of Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn coming in, who, you know, are, are established wrestlers. You know, that's okay. They're established on the independent scene. They're coming into the national national TV. You know, they're, 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 they're sort of being there to sort of like be prepared for going on to nationally syndicated television. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can call NXT a developmental. De- 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 developmental brand anymore when it's on nationally syndicated television. Of course, you can call it developmental. At the end of the day, think about think about heat, think about velocity, think about all these kind of little shows that had matches on it. Yeah, with a guy you don't know versus a guy who, you know, is is an undercard guy, isn't established. Yeah, and that was their part of their form of developmental. Yeah. You look at yeah. what NXT is, the, if it's not a developmental, you don't get called up to the main roster. That's the terminology you need to make yeah. sure. That's you how it's portrayed. Because Yeah, you get called up, you get promoted. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not up. that much of a promotion. Though. It isn't, no. But it's insulting. It's going from being in front of a couple of thousand people uh, at the time when they had crowds and say half a million viewers to being in front of 1.6 million viewers at its best. At least the and professionals are not going to change stuff over a couple of million. Sure. That, that's not. Adam Cole's not going to... Adam Cole is a professional. He's been doing this for years. He's been in the Tokyo Dome. He's done for New Japan. He's been for Ring of Honor. There's, I'm, I'm not being funny, but that bloke isn't going to fret over being on SmackDown or Raw. I will, I, I, I will argue... I will argue this, yeah. Okay, he has all, he's wrestled the Tokyo Dome. He's done this and the other. And that is a big arena. I will get that. But that is one show in an entire yeah. year. When you're wrestling on WWE, WWE and you're on tour and you're on Raw and you've got crowds, you're wrestling in front of 30,000 people per night. Yeah. But you Not think that's bothers someone? If you're a professional, 
<laughs> things like that should not bother you. It, it should bother you. I agree. It happens to everybody. Everybody can suffer with anxiety. Yeah. Look you at Lars might... Sullivan. Lars Sullivan. It happened to Lars exactly. Sullivan. He was okay in NXT. He Lots even did a few takes. To Lars Sullivan. Yeah, well, we'll go into that. We <laughs> it, that was just a, a plethora of things. Mm. But I'm sorry, but I don't like. I think it's insulting to say that someone uh, the the status in terms of the pref- forget WWE, AW, forget the the different promotions for a minute. Let's take pro wrestling as a whole. Adam Cole and Finn Balor are very high up in terms of what pro wrestling fans think of them. They're very up there. It, dep- it depends what you think about pro. It depends on the type of fan you're talking about. Re- but, regardless, yeah. Adam Cole and Finn Balor are, are the names. You know what I mean? They're the na- In terms of pro wrestling, it's up there in terms of names, aren't they? In the pro wrestling world. Yes, if you're a big person into wrestling, if you're a reg- like, for example, 10-year-old, exactly. Tim- 10-year-old little Timmy, He's not going Timmy. to know who Adam Cole yeah. is. Roman yeah. Reigns is, or John Cena are 10 year old little Timmy's big guys. Yeah. If you you're know, a big. You could have phrased that a bit differently. <laughs> okay. But you know what I mean. Hey, 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 you're big guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it's the big names that casual fans, where WWE make most of their money from. They're the guys that they're going to know. The biggest merch sellers are these guys like Roman Reigns, like John Cena, like Braun Strowman. The larger than life guys that are like, wow, that is a pro wrestler. If you, you know, if NXT has its market, AEW has its market, ROH has its market. What you're (laughs) not. (laughs) Well, had its market. Had its market. But the point is, these guys, you know, if you notice the big, huge, seven foot guys tend to end up in WWE because that is what they think, right? Pro wrestling is WWE. Pro wrestlers are these big, huge guys that are larger than life, not five foot eight Adam Cole, Mm. who you could, you pass him in the middle of the street and say, oh, yeah, he's actually quite, you know, he's built, he's fairly built, but you wouldn't say, right, he's a pro wrestler. Yeah, I, I, he's got the skills. I he's got, he's got, he can sell. He can do this, that, and the other. But end of the day, look what happened to someone like Ricochet on the main roster, shall we say? They still call it the main roster. Yeah, right. Someone like Ricochet, who's immensely talented, can do amazing stuff, is ultimately lost in the shuffle on, on Raw and SmackDown, partly because of how he wrestles, partly because how he's been booked. And partly because how he looks, because I feel yeah. that I feel that, you know, and I'll be honest, I was the biggest fucking advocate for sort of like, you know, Daniel Bryan through his fucking run because he had probably one of the biggest connections with sort of like, well, there's one of the biggest potentials of sort of like having a connection with the mainstream audience because they basically looked at this guy. Okay, he's not built like a pro wrestler, but by God, he fucking works his socks off and he doesn't give up and he doesn't, you know, give in and stuff like that. Well, so I feel that's... He, there's, he there was shit like a pro wrestler. That's the thing. Yeah. He pull, he pull, he pull, if you think look at Daniel Bryan, you will think pro wrestler. Yeah. Because of the way he carries himself, he, he, he looks bigger than he actually is. Yeah. And he, he, he doesn't bounce around the ring like an absolute... Like an eel. Willing yeah. around like people like Ricochet do, and it just makes them look a lot small. So like, you don't going to see someone the size of like Braun Strowman flying around, yeah, like that. It's it, and, and that's it, what WWE's main product is all about. It's the larger than life guys. I feel like that's been a sort of like a detriment to the wrestling business as a whole. Yes, because they've basically looked at Daniel Bryan and just sort of like been been like. Oh well, if Daniel Bryan can make it, anybody can make it as a professional wrestler. And you just yeah. feel like you have to go, yeah. But you need more than just sort of like you know, you know, you, yes. you, you can you can have sort of like a body type. You can be sort of like the height of Daniel Bryan or whatever. But what made Daniel Bryan great was the fact that he was able to connect mm-hmm. with that level well with that level of an audience that they would be they would get behind him at every fucking stretch is it? and the guy and i feel is... and i feel that's given like a lot of wannabe well 
a lot of wannabe pro wrestlers, a lot of people who want to be pro wrestlers who may be sort of like similar to Daniel Bryan. And I feel like they get given too much of an opportunity. When um... in when well, when when you think about it, it's just sort of like, is there anybody who is sort of like 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 Daniel Bryan from a physical aspect that would be able to connect as much as he has been able to connect. No, because he has he has a personality and he has a way he put, put he puts himself across. But but that that's that's the thing. It's yeah. just sort of like you know, people they may have these sort of like you know these personalities just brewing under the surface, but you know, for the most part, they're not allowed to sort of like showcase these mm-hmm. these personalities that they've got. Possibly sort of like, you know, bubbling under the surface. This is it. And I do feel like someone like Daniel Bryan is a bit of an anomaly. And I don't want to say that. I know there's a lot of guys out there that are really fucking talented. Yeah. You know, that uh, deserve that spot. But they're not going to be booked that way with WWE. Because their thing is, I want a guy who's six foot six and absolutely juiced. Yeah. That is what they want. And if you're not yeah. that, you are not getting booked to the moon. Look at someone like Drew McIntyre. Mm. There's so many guys that are a better wrestler than they are. But because they're a lot smaller than him, they're not getting a look in. Yeah. Because that's not what Vince sees as a pro wrestler. A pro that's, wrestler. That's, you know what? that's not that's not what Vince McMahon sees as like a main event of WrestleMania. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, unless you're like say Daniel Bryan which was the anomaly I feel but that was because yeah. the story and the booking behind that run was fucking phenomenal <laughs> even if they didn't intend for him to get over as he got over that, Absolutely. That's, the, that's the thing that's the thing despite their booking he still managed to be like the hottest act in the company at the time yep. which I don't think you can say about a lot of people nowadays with the way WWE book Yeah, because they just fucking you know they flop and they flounder and they you know they end up fucking going on main event for the rest of the WWE they end up, they end up chasing our truth around well yeah that's what they end up doing yeah that's, well, that's when you know when your WWE careers down the shit is when you start chasing our truth let's be to honest be I don't even know I don't know if I don't know if we mentioned in a bit that I missed but where the fuck is Alistair Black well this is it another guy <laughs> now this guy has got star written all over him well, I thought he did hmm because he was different and unique, you know, and he's wrestling, you know, with a striking style. Mm-hmm. But... Well, the, the the last feud he was in was that whole, like, Alistair Black, Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens feud against fucking Messiah, Seth Rollins and his little band of merry men. And then his, um, his fiance Zelina Vega, got released because she was, like, you know, Arguing with them over sort of, Twitch, she, um, made, she made more money from her ma- from her OnlyFans than she did from the WWE. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you know, well, I, 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 I'm pretty sure there's sort of like somewhere in every talent's contract that you know, if you're making more on these sort of like you know websites or whatever, then you are making from your actual contract that WWE is owed sort of like a slice of that pie, and she apparently disagreed, and that's what led to her release. Well, yeah, basically, the the thing that they, the the thing that they put in place, because I'm not too sure, I'm not, I don't know if it was, I'm assuming it must have been in the contracts, but they basically said that if you make money from these third parties, it comes out of your base contract. Yeah. You know, and anything over and above your base contract is ours. Mm-hmm. So, that which is ridiculous. Well, I mean, it's, well, it's, it might be ridiculous, but the thing is, if you sign on the dotted line and then you sort of like go into a thing of, oh, well, this isn't what I negotiated, then WWE themselves can just sort of like, right there in your contract, love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 scummy, it's scummy, but it's legal. Yeah, um, I, it's, that's because you know, but our one of our favorite podcasts, Wrestling Soup, did this whole like thing of. I think it was like Paige that was like, you know, sort of like went into a great big massive sob story. It's like, I can't go out and wrestle the one thing I love to do. And they're trying to take money off me. It's like, love, you're being paid like 200, 250K a fucking year to appear on like six episodes of WWE backstage. Yeah, it sucked what fucking happened to you. 
But, you know, that's what happens when you fucking go into, when you start training to be a wrestler at fucking age 10 and your fucking body hasn't had time to grow properly. Yeah. And it fucking sucks what happened to it. It's like, it is, but you can't legitimately fucking, you know, cry wolf and say, oh, WWE are taking my, you know, taking away my sort of like my pleasures of being able to stream and that when they're paying you X amount of money for sort of like doing a couple of fucking talk shows a year. And let's yeah. just re- let's remember as well, they actually paid her when she broke her fucking neck. Mm. And to yeah. do nothing, and to parade around with uh, Roberto Del- El Patron. Yeah, making a fucking ass of herself and company. Back. Yeah, and they paid her. And she's still on the fucking books. Yeah. It's... So, it's one of them. Uh, Anne, what, did you, what do you think about, like, you know, talented WWE? Because, yeah, we, we, we've kind of tangented off that and <laughs> your, your face was like, yeah, you're talking I, bollocks. I, I, so. I, I'm not. I'm taking it all in because it's it's such a messed up bloody world in general at the minute. Mm. And I think the world of pro wrestling is 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 messy in terms of WWE because I, I, it's it so depends on not how good you are at your job, but how you look doing it. I'm fortunate. I would say. Pro wrestling, that's probably 50% of the... And I think that's... Yeah. Because you, you're all talking about, you know, uh, the terms of how you look look like a main eventer or you look like uh, you, you're a world champion, etc. cetera. I'm not saying I agree with it. It's oh, just, no, I'm just yeah, saying the but that's, the, that's the yeah. general thing, isn't it? And I yeah. think, isn't that kind of the problem? That's the problem that Vince himself has created... Not just in his own company, but in others as well. Mm. What, I, what it, I will it's, argue, it's, it, I think it's it, it's a big demon hanging over wrestling at the minute. It's a big, mm. big demon, and I can't help but thinking that people's um, confidence, uh, people. It, I mean, if I'm good at my job, and someone walks in who I know is I'm better than, yeah. But the other, but my boss deems they look the part more. That's going to knock me back a bit. Mm. It's it's it, it it's a very dangerous cycle to get into. Not just for your, your company, because I don't think it'll affect Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon will just buy another six foot something wrestler, uh, something yeah, over, absolutely. turn him into a wrestler. He already has. It's, yeah, it's, not gonna <laughs> affect, it's never going to affect him. It never is. It never will. But in terms of what me now, I'm a five foot eight. <laughs> nothing okay so let's go back to um till i w- when i was 18 and and think about okay i want to be a wrestler and i hear this oh you're not going to be anything unless you're six foot something you're not going to be anything unless you look absolutely massive that's and then there's part of me that wants to turn around and say why why is that the case and it, it, I think it just damages people in the end. I think it really yeah. does. Uh, it, it really does bring, it must bring people down to the absolute uh, bare bones of confidence. Um, I think you've it's got, not, you've got I a think pro- it... you've got, you, to, sorry, Paul, I don't mean to talk no, you over. Go ahead, man. You go ahead, man. Um, but the way that it plays to me is, okay, you know, you, uh, uh, five, four, eight, or, you know, whatever, you walk in there and somebody says, right, you're not, you're no effect, but we don't see you as main event material. But why can't you be the guy who works with the main eventer? Why can't, okay, you're not, you're not a, you're not a world champion, but you've still got to work at that level. You've still got made the most of what you've got. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 for, and some way, you know, look, look at Finn Balor. No, no offense to Finn Balor. I think he's great. Uh, a little bit too much of the divey stuff, but it works because he's a smaller guy. Fine. He looks, you know, he, he looks great for a smaller guy. And he got that world heavyweight title. And okay, he held it for a day and then, you know, he got injured and whatever. And now he's in NXT. Do, do, does he think as the NXT champion that title is worth any less than the world heavyweight title? No. But He's worked in the main event. He's worked with Brock Lesnar. Mm. Yeah, he's worked with the guy. Yeah, 
yeah, I, I, I think there is a, I think there's more of a healthier attitude to most guys nowadays where they're just sort of like, it's okay to sort of like, because, you know, there's the, the age old thing of sort of like, you know, Triple H just going, if you're not in this business to be world heavyweight champion, then what the hell are you doing here? I don't think that necessarily applies to a lot of people because there are a lot of guys who just sort of like, you know, they they they, they know they're not going to be a main event of WrestleMania. They know they're not going to be competing for a world. Well, they know they know they're not going to be sort of like world champions. And a lot of people, like particularly nowadays, are okay with that. They yes, sort right. of like they 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 know they know their position in the company, hmm. and they're just sort of like they're just going well. I t- okay. This dream isn't possible, but I'm going to make the best out of this situation that I'm put in. Like one of the people that always comes to mind is sort of like someone who always goes to shoot above his weight and is incredibly bitter about it is Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, because Dolph Dolph Ziggler is just sort of like well, you don't look you don't look at Dolph Ziggler and think yes that is the main event that is the main face of the company where yeah. he fought entirely differently and that's why he's fought of significantly less than he was sort of like maybe five, six years ago. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, on the flip side, look at, look at somebody like William Regal. Uh, and I, and um, I look, he did a, he was on the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast a long time ago. Yeah. And he, and he, and like we've, I've been to see him live and he's talked about it. I knew, I, I knew I wasn't going to be the main guy. Yeah. And he yeah. said, it, even, even when I was working in, in England, I was, Big Daddy's tag team partner, and that was the best I could ever do. I would be his tag team partner in the main event every week, and Big Daddy would get all the glory, and I would just be his tag team partner who gets worked over. That was my role. So I quit. I went to America, and I knew I wouldn't be the main guy. Mm-hmm. But I wanted something more, something different. Yeah. And he and he said, you know, and even like. You know, when I when I've been in the company for a long while, like you know, the, okay, the, you know, um, they set me up to work with work with Edge, and you know, Vince comes over and he says, you know, just, just, you know, they know that I can work and they know that, you know, I I, I know that I'm there basically to give people a roughing up, and you know, and we'll see how they react to it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. I gave him a few couple, like you know, a couple of potatoes, and you know, I, you know. <laughs> And Edge, it's Edge the, still it's, goes it's, over. It's the JBL. It's the JBL mentality of just sort of like you know, <laughs> I'll give them a couple of socks if they give me a couple of back. I'm like, ooh, yeah. we're, we're on something here. Exactly. But he, that's what he was told to do. He's told to go and see. Well, see if this guy's main event level. See if this guy can handle it. So yeah. I went. I roughed him up a bit. You know, give him a bit of a good put, good uh, going over and whatnot because they knew I could do that. I knew I was going to lose, but it didn't matter. Because mm-hmm. I was there to do a job, so I did my job, and yeah. he always knew he was that's what the level he was going to be at. But the thing is, though, if you know that level, and they see you as a good hand, you've got a job for life. That's the thing. Look Probably. at William Regal now. Mm-hmm. Well, Dolph Ziggler's they, got a job yeah. for life. Our Truth has got a, not a job for life. They know their lane. They yeah. know their lane. They stick exactly. to it. They're happy with it, and for, they'll never be they'll never be stuck for money again for the rest of their lives. Yeah, never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, I know it's. I know it's disappointing. When maybe, yeah. if you, like I say, if you're a massive fan of these wrestlers and you think they're the most talented people in the world, yes, they are very talented, but they're not necessarily talented in the way that WWE sees them. They may yeah. see that, as like, for example, someone like William Regal, who's a fantastic worker who can make wrestle a decent match out of a broom. But at the end of the day, you're not going to have a broom as your world champion. Yeah, you're yeah. going to want somebody to work, who can work well as themselves against another wrestler that may not be able to wrestle a great match. Yeah. You want these hands to make them look good. The to make them look yeah. good, yeah. You need and them. And as, like, I always think back to, you know, the very few times that I've watched like WWE over the past and the likes of um, the Cesaro Sheamus feud before they ended up being a tag team. Um, you know, the Alistair Black Buddy Murphy feud the like very brief feud between sort of like Daniel Bryan and Drew Gulak. Those mm. programs were very much lower on the card, but you almost enjoy them more than what's going on in the main event level. Yes. So yes. you think you think to a certain extent, 
you know, those are guys who sort of like, as you say, they know their lot in WWE and they're making the best of it. And, it, you know, I've given you three examples there of like quality freaking television. OK, it's not in the main event where they probably dreamed of going, you, you know, when they yeah. if, if, if they dreamed about being a wrestler from a kid. But as I say, just making the best of a bad situation and putting in as good a quality as they know they can give in. And I don't oh, think I don't I don't think there's any harm in sort of like you know having that kind of mentality because yeah, I think absolutely. it's 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 I think it's one of those things that's been phased out a lot from modern wrestling and I don't see, see uh, I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. No, I no. agree. I and, not, and not only that on these lower card matches as well, where there's not as much attention on them, a lot of these people have a lot more like freedom to do what they want. Yeah, yeah. I, I I relate I relate to sort of like a. Um, I think it was like NXT Chicago or something like that, where it was Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne for the yes. WWE oh, UK Championship. What a match! But oh. the thing is, the thing is, you're, like you're watching that back, and the match initially begins, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. T- t- let's be honest. Nobody yep. really, t- nobody really cares. It's like Crickets. an added extra. It's an added extra for the show. You know, it's 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 on the card, but nobody's really there to see the WWE UK Championship on. On display. By the end of that fucking match, every single person in that stadium is on their fucking feet. Yeah. It's on their fucking feet in all chanting fucking NXT. This is awesome. Even getting a UK chant going. Yeah. Because yeah, you know, it was it's the, arguably it, the best thing on the card. Yeah. It was the first it was the first title defense in front of an American crowd, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And yeah, for you that, know, for that, that specific title, yeah. Yeah. You know, and that like you say, that got the crowd going. I mean, you know, they didn't... This is a crowd who isn't used to the British style, yeah? yeah. So, and that was... that. I mean, that match was fucking amazing. Yes. But I also, like, don't... That Could that match have been the main event of WrestleMania? Absolutely not. No. no. It couldn't have been. It couldn't have been. It's not a... Spe- it's not a it, this, this, this is part... I mean, not to move on to ragging on AEW because I don't want to. But in AEW, you look at Cody Rhodes as the main guy. <laughs> it might just be me, right? But Cody Rhodes is one of the most recognisable names they have and should be in the main event. Right? Arguably, I would say he is. At least uh, in, the, in the US he is. But he's not booked in the main event. No. He has 20-minute matches with job guys. Well, that's, that knack and neck tattoo doesn't really help. True. <laughs> That is the worst tattoo I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, I've seen some fucking shockers and all. Fuck me. Well, I mean, it's, what's worse, Cody's knack and neck tattoo or Brock Lesnar's great big massive sword down his chest? To be fair, Ooh. I think I've got nothing bad to say about Brock Lesnar because if I did, he'd hunt me down and fucking snap me like a twig. Yes, you fucking... Have, smart, have you smart. seen him? Sorry, I'd much rather it. say Cody Rhodes, your tattoo is shit, than Brock Lesnar, your tattoo is shit. Let's be honest. Smart, the, man's smart, a for, right. the man's a former UFC heavyweight champion. I, yeah. I'm not fucking with that guy. Yeah. All I'm going to say about Brock Lesnar is cardio, run away. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it, Brock, I think you're perfect just the way you are. Yeah, bro, <laughs> no, no offense, but Brock Lesnar can outrun me, so no, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not giving him any shit. Cody Rhodes, come at me all you want, I outweigh you, you know. <laughs> bro, bro, bro Lesnar, no, nope. you're all right, mate. <laughs> Good man. Cody, Cody Rhodes, I'll fucking sit on you. <laughs> oh, fuck 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 but yeah, oh, man. Uh, I think we put the world of wrestling to rights, there. Oh, God. <laughs> Have we? Haven't we? Have I was going to say. I was going to say. Do you want to move on to a different topic? And um, yeah, we can. Just, just give me one second. Or like, bring up a new background picture. Oh, he's going to bring a background picture. Yes, that was what I was going to move on to. You're oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Not the not the Jags per se, but there was a certain game that happened last week, and it was. Uh, oh. What can I say? Piss poor. Oh. Well, yeah. But it's, well, I, I, I wanted to bring this up on the show, Paul, because technically this is your very first full NFL season. Yes, it is. I I watched um, the Super Bowl last year because I sort of like for like you know what these guys are talking about the NFL the whole time, and I'm aware of the NFL, mm-hmm. and they seem to get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I thought, do you know what? 
what I'll do, I'll do it. I'll get into it the same way as I get into any sport that I'm curious about. Get a very old version of it for the on, the, on like Xbox or PlayStation, and learn the rules that way. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that is what I did, and I got into it. And it's sort of like all the basic things to learn, basically, is you've got four attempts to get it 10 yards. If not, you have to hand the ball back. That's it. Keep going until you get to the end. That's yep. the basics. And I got into that. I thought, yeah, actually, I understand this sort of thing. So I got into it, side watch. I thought, do you know what? I'll, I'll pick a team and I'll watch the Super Bowl. So I got obviously went through my selection process, sort of like going through my teams. In the end, I ended up settling on the, on the Bears because, you know, my son likes Bears and... You know, the only affiliation of any city I've got is because of a podcast that originates from there. And they have a quality defence. And to, yeah. well, well, to yeah. be honest with you, if you're thinking about sort of like the same um, podcast that I'm thinking of, if you're sort of like putting it, if it's a toss up between the Bears and the Patriots, then, you know, I think. You... Wow. Well. well. Please, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I. I've, hey, I've, hey. I've, 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 I've honestly, I've never. Stephen Hawking could have thrown the ball fucking better than Cam Newton this year. <laughs> I mean, fucking hell. Uh, honestly, uh, there's, 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 uh, there's literally people with no arms who I would have rather had at quarterback this year. Jesus. And I've, I've honestly, hey. I've never been so depressed on a Sunday night in my whole life. I've, I've. <laughs> To, to watch him constantly throw it to the other team. He either throws it to the other team or thin fucking air. And it's the most irritating thing. Because I'm not being funny. I have a, a tremendous amount of respect for these guys because you have to remember all these players. But how hard could it be fucking be to throw it to someone in the same fucking colour shirt as you? Because I'm not... Because Jesus wept. Fuck not, me. <laughs> <laughs> not, to be a, not to be a Cam Newton defender, but I think... The smartest thing the Patriots did, because uh, they were obviously going to sign him, at the beginning of the season, they waited, they waited, they waited. They signed him to a veteran minimum contract, so he got paid basically nothing Yep. to see if the sh- shoulder surgery he'd gone through in the offseason worked. It clearly did not. There's nothing to do with his well, shoulder. It's his fucking brain. That's... Fucking hell. That he is... needs brain surgery. That as well, and he had COVID as well, like, you know, yeah. a couple of weeks into the season. And I can tell you from sort of like, you know, watching players in the Premier League, when they come back from COVID, they're not, they're the not, same. They're not, they're, they're not necessarily at the races right away. Look, so, look at Miles I'm, Garrett I'm, I'm, the Browns. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, as I say, I'm with Bunkle, who's sort of like, you know, it's a trial trial by fire. Yeah. It's, well, it's a trial by fire period for the Patriots because you know it's you know it's 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 it was a freemium trial it was a freemium trial that's what it was you're you're trying to you're trying to replace what is arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time you're gonna go through some hard shit it's it's not even arguable anymore I, I mean okay you know you can say Montana was great you can say Steve Young was great et cetera et cetera but Nobody, nobody in in sports has seven titles. Not, uh, not, uh, not, not one, Schumer, not uh, one uh, NFL. We'll, not uh, one uh, NFL. Hang on a minute. Has. We'll, we'll, uh, uh, Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> no, no. T- all right. All right. Not, sure Michael Jordan's Jordan's not well. I'll let put, you off. put this into context. Tom Brady has more Super Bowl rings than any one team in the NFL. Yeah. That's a yeah. Point, yeah. Put, think about it this way, right? You like NBA, aren't you? Yeah. Tom Brady is more likely to appear in the Super Bowl than Steve Cu- yeah. Steve Curry, whatever he's called. Steph, Steph Curry. Steph Curry. Steve. It, <laughs> Big up Steve Curry. Curry. Steve Curry. <laughs> Steph Curry is. <laughs> he hit a free point. Yeah. Excellent discounts on his madras. <laughs> <laughs> Halal, hey. is it meat you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> By Steve Curry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Tom Brady is more likely to go to the Super Bowl than... Steph Curry is to make a three-pointer over the cor- over the course of both their It is a bit of a mad start, that, yeah. It's a bit mad. Ridiculous. Uh, and, you know, I hate Tom Brady. I'll be open. I hate him. I hate his face. But he's the greatest of all time. And, uh, and I hate him for it, but there you go. It, I mean, 
you know, you look at all the records Drew Brees broke and this, that, and the other, and yeah, it, just, it can't be Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And no, I think, I think it's uh, my, the thing, the Saints, so. There's, well, <laughs> there's, the thing is, man, the thing is, you have to, you're not the only one in the boat of, you know, sort of like being in a, well, <laughs> in this call of supporting a team that is going to go through a fucking rough patch for the next couple of years, because as Mr. Billy the Boy Bunkle will tell you, as a Saints fan, um, their long-standing quarterback, Drew Brees, who is a God-given talented athlete, it's arguably po- probably should have been to more Super Bowls. You could probably argue c- should have had more Super Bowl wins. He has, for the large part, had his career fucking wasted at the Saints because they're not a together unit. And, you know, now he's... Uh, now he's decided to uh, to hang the boots up, as they would say, and you know. First time in his, I'll put it out for the first time in his career has taken a massive pay cut to help the Saints out <laughs> because they've got so much because they're that far in the red. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and I'm sorry to say this, man. It's like you're probably going to be like Anthony as your team is going to go through some hard times over the next couple of years. Not only is our team going to go through hard times, but we will struggle to get back out of it. Ant's team, because Bill Belichick is somehow magic, will no doubt trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars for the number one pick, get Trevor Lawrence, and go straight back. Fuck off! (laughs) Christ, have you just simulated a Madden season? In fucking fucking Ant's dreams. Calm down, pal. In Ant's dreams. Like, I realise the fucking Jacksonville Jaguars aren't the fucking model organisation of the NFL, but they're not that fucking stupid. If, if that happened, I'd be cartwheeling naked around Blackpool for the lender for the next fucking ten months. <laughs> and I'll, mean, drive, I'll, I'll drive around to get video footage. I've said, <laughs> yeah, I fucking will as well. What is that? Come since, on! Since, since it might not be number one, that's, that's uh, you know, but since the beginning of the season, I've said the Patriots are trying to tank. And they've they did a shit job of it. <laughs> job. You can't they, even fucking do that right. They've come. <laughs> this is one of this is the is this not the worst record they've ever had under Belichick, right? And therefore they'll have the highest pick they've ever had under Belichick. You're telling me that they won't bundle picks from this year, picks from next year, etc., to move up the draft and select the quarterback of the future. Well, and if, they, if, if, if they want if they want a high quality quarterback, they're gonna have to fucking shift a load of fucking draft capital. Draft capital, because yeah. you know with the field this year, I mean you've got like Trevor Lawrence, you've got Justin Fields out of Ohio State, you've got fucking Zach Wilson that everybody's talking about. There's fucking um, Matt, Trey Lance. I mean, I, I, I don't Matt, think it's Matt I don't Jones think from Alabama who I could see them going for because he's worked under Saban, who yeah. learned under Belichick. The guy from uh, the Gators, I can't remember his name oh, off the top of my yes. head. Oh, he was but, to be available in the second round. But at you the know. same time, at the same time as well, there are well, it, there are as many quarterbacks as I can remember that are looking at trades elsewhere in free, well, in free agency or like trades elsewhere who are on current rosters. You know, there's like top of the list is fucking Deshaun Watson. Yep. The fucking Houston Texans, uh, well, they're probably the, the most shit show organisation in the NFL at the moment because... <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because from fucking, um, you know, even going back to sort of like last year, they traded away their top wide receiver, their <laughs> top wide receiver for... <laughs> Oh, excuse me. For like a, t- a couple of picks and like a backup running back. A backup running See, back and like a third round pick or something stupid. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's because, <laughs> and like, after, I think it was like the, the current coach and head and general manager at the time, Bill O'Brien, comparing him to Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez, who was a former member of the, who was a former NFL running back and is a convicted murderer. It was it was a tight, tight end. end. Yeah. Tight end. Oh, it was a tight end, was it? Oh, if you want to know what he did, I think there's a show on Netflix. There is there a is, show on Netflix it's about Aaron Hernandez. Actually, yeah. <laughs> go watch it. It's um, fascinating and fully it enjoyable. Is. And, and the, it's the, up, the, right the up there with Schindler's List. 
I'm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, if you thought I'm Frank, if you thought I'm Frank was comedy, up you come. Get this down your neck. You'll love it. And God. to add to the Houston Texans' worries as well, they not only started zero and five in the season, but they've pissed off their star star quarterback by not having him have a say in sort of like the hiring of a new head coach, or was it GM? It was I can't GM. remember. GM, GM. Was it GM? Yeah. Right. Okay. So he's wanting out. It was already released today that the star defensive lineman, TJ Watt, is going to be released. So he's, he's off. He's and off. To I'm free. Agency. Free falling. That's yep. <laughs> and, and they don't have their top two picks in the draft because they've traded it away to fucking Miami. Right. So they are. They are the biggest fuck ups. They are the biggest fuck ups in terms of organization in the NFL land. So I wouldn't. <laughs> I think Houston believe, as a whole it. has just gone mad. They, they've recently traded a, a Houston Rockets traded a, a few weeks ago now. J- James Harden uh, yeah, from yeah, the Rockets yeah. uh, to the oh. Brooklyn Nets. I mean, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh well, they had to get rid Houston of Harden. As a, <laughs> Houston as a whole. Houston as a whole has been, well, the, the sports teams in Houston, Texas, have been in a fucking hole since the Houston Astros, who are their baseball team, won the World Series in 2017. And they didn't even do it properly. They legitimately fucking cheated. And you look at the shit show that has gone through every single one of their sporting organizations since this tainted win from their baseball team, and it's fucking, it's terrifying. Like, there's a link that my um, my favourite NFL YouTuber, Urinating Tree, has done about the Houston Texans. It's like a half-hour video that's basically documenting everything that's happened from sort of, like, the, um, the sporting teams of Texans from the Astros um, baseball, like, World Series win up until sort of, like, I don't know, halfway through the NFL season this year. Like, it's fucking scary how every single one of their sporting fi- franchises has gone fucking plummeting to the ground. Plummeting. Like, it's fucking scary. Fucking grip. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the, media- the middling mediocrity that is the Chicago Bears at this moment in time as well. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Oh, mate. If you want us to come around and sort it, sort it out for you, we'll be more than happy to. <laughs> uh, just, I... just don't. Just set your very standards very fucking low. Well, apparently, well, apparently the Bears are interested. Is it Wentz or whatever his Carson name is? Wentz. Carson oh Wentz. Philadelphia, who, <laughs> given his fucking comments towards the end of the season, it's like, okay, I've, I've, I admit you were done dirty by Doug Peterson. Yeah, but at the same time, you have to be the, the bigger guy. Mm. You have to be the bigger guy. You can't just be sort of like, you can't be doing what the fucking Pittsburgh Steelers did. And just sort of like, you know, <laughs> being Mr. Billy Big Bollocks when in actuality, you know, you should like know your place, which seems to be the theme of the podcast, sort of like knowing your place. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the Pittsburgh Steelers, I just want to say the name of your stadium is Heinz Stadium. Now, it's not a great start, is it? Because I know you make, you make tomato sauce for a living at Heinz. And, and baked beans. And baked beans. It's not a, a stadium that inspires sort of, uh, yeah, let's get our baked beans going, boys. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it's not a soldier baked feel, beans, is it? Baked beans, baked beans. You, you know what I mean? No one's chanting and defending Heinz Field, are they? It's sort of like defending your back garden at this rate. Sketty oop, sketty oop, sketty oop. <laughs> 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 That's what, and that's that's what they should replace when in, when they win a game. Instead of confetti, bang, spaghetti oops, baked beans, <laughs> you name it. Every, abs, every people absolutely smothered in Heinz, absolutely <coughs> smothered in Heinz. Bring some character to the place. I'm not inspired by the the the, the, the name Heinz Field. It's sort of like. Oh, if you do that though, you've got to have a family section that's got them, you know, the other spaghetti shapes and Thomas the Tank Engine and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can just nickname that the Nickelodeon Zone. 
<laughs> Leeds don't have the Yorkshire Tea Arena, do they? And nor should they. <laughs> I don't know. That would be fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> tea bags, tea bags. Yeah, going absolutely bully for tea bags down in Yorkshire. Um. So yeah. To, what What were your um? I'm interested to know, Paul. Like, given this is this was your very first season, take your Chicago Bears out of the uh, out of the fray. Aye. How have you? Uh, how have you enjoyed your? Uh, have you enjoyed your debut season? I've enjoyed it. The more I've understood it, if that makes mm. sense. The more yeah. I've learned, like, obviously, you know, how, I mean, obviously, what. When you first watch it, you see these flags flying out. You're like, what are they for? And you look at it, but I don't see anything wrong. Like, for example, pass interference. It's like, I don't see what's wrong with that, what they're doing. And then as you go in, you understand it. It's explained to you. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. And you see, you sort of see rather than how like I described it, how simple it was to how complex a sport it actually is. Yeah. And you know me, I'm, I, I, I watch Formula One. It's a really complex sport. It's not just a case of watching cars going around in a circle. To the uninitiated, it is. But once you get into the de- into it and the depth, mm. there's a lot more to it. Uh, it's the same with American football. Once you dig into it a bit more, it's infinitely more enjoyable. Yeah. And some of the best sort of like the best, well, because obviously the shit show that we've had of COVID recently. Some of the best evenings entertainment is me, me sat there over beer watching Red Zone. Mm-hmm. I must say that show is done so well. It's brilliant. Yeah, I it's described really I, well. I described it to someone. It's like what six hours of football. I described it as match of the day, but for American football and done as it happens. There's, it's it's interesting you say that because there's a um, BT Sport do a show for the Champions League called the Champions League Goal Show, which is a very similar concept to it, but it's sort of like you did where, you know, they'll sort of like they'll focus on one game and they'll focus on another game and then they'll you know they'll they'll pop pop mm. around each game that's being played. And when a major thing happens in sort of like one game, they'll go and like cut to it. Yes. But that's sort of like it's that's you you get more from sort of like NFL red zone because it, it, it there's well, there's a lot more going on because a lot more stuff can happen in a game of American football than, say, in a game of like soccer, as they yeah, would call absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's like when it was like the end, I think it was like the last game of the regular season. And it was like it was either the Bears going into the playoffs or the Cardinals. And there was another team, I think it was the Rams, was it? Yeah. Yeah. And it was two or three was going to make it. And mm-hmm. it was a case of how do you watch these? Both of these happened at the same time. Red Zone. Yep. yep, it was it's so easy to keep track of, and it was like it was. It, I really enjoyed it. I mean, they, I get, a, they give you scenarios and possibilities of just sort of like you know, oh, if this team wins, that means this team has to do this, and you yes. know, sort of like that's the beauty of the NFL in 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 main asset aspects, particularly when you get to the end of the season, because when there were like playoff places on the line, and sort of like you know, there are games. That it's, you know, there are vital games. They're like the must watch because, mm. from a drama standpoint, they 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 really are fucking entertaining. Really there's are lot, entertaining. Well, even like I say, there's like there's something to play for all the way through the season. I mean, no matter where you are, it's like well, for some of you, some yeah. Of you. Well, t- I mean, I mean, sort of like take Get my bed. Take, take my... <laughs> hey, it's not. <laughs> Yeah. It's, in a weird way, though, you're you sort of like competing for draft places as well. You know what I well, mean? Draft picks. Oh yeah, I'm fucking thrilled about that, aren't I? I'm <laughs> fucking thrilled watching us fight it out to try to lose every week. Hey, hey oh, you're, you're talking. To, you're talking to somebody who, as a Jacksonville Jaguars fan, was all set on being of just having the number two pick and just sort of like, oh well, Trevor Lawrence is going off to the New York Jets, and then you know the Jets started. Winning against the teams like the Rams, and then they sort of like you know very nearly beat the Los Angeles uh, Las Vegas Char uh, Las Vegas Char Las Vegas Raiders. Fucking hell! You just sort of like you were playing there. You just got to mix and match these fucking teams <laughs> around. <then. laughs> Too many sort of like LV LA and they sort of like you know corresponding you know second names, mm. um, and then as soon as it got to sort of like week. 15 i believe it was 
when sort of like the Jets won their second game, and I was just sort of like, hang on a minute. I was only expecting the number two pick. It was just sort of like, we've got the first, the first overall. And I'm there just sort of like going, Jets, what are you doing? It's like you can't even fucking tank properly. You have to butt fumble it, as you have yeah. done for the entirety of your existence. Which, hey, I'm not bothered about. We've got the number one overall pick. We've got an exciting um, manager coming in who's one of the most prolific winners in college football. Whether that translates to the NFL and whether he stays healthy enough to, you know, keep his job because, like, the past couple of jobs that he's had, he's had to, you know, step down because of health reasons. Um, You know, and we've got sort of, like, there is talent there on that roster at the moment. And we have, like, 75 to 80 million cap space. Well, we've got the most cap space of any team in the NFL Yes. And also, they're going to be coming to Florida where there's no fucking state income tax. So, you know, you're just sort of like, hey, TJ Watt. Come here. Come here. TJ Watt's <laughs> going, to, going to the books, unfortunately. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it, yeah, I can just imagine it. Hmm. Just yeah. particularly, the way, particularly the way that that offensive line of, the, of Kansas City fucking folded to that defense. Yeah. <laughs> What they it, need is TJ Watt. <laughs> and at the risk of making you absolutely wet yourself laughing, because I'm not quite sure this, what the hell is a butt fumble? Oh, I, I am not aware of this. So, um, there was a game between... Diarrhea. There was a game between the New York Jets and the New England Patriots. I want to say, like, mid-2000s. Okay. Yeah. Right? Something like that. And basically what happened was the quarterback... They would they were going for sort of like say like a fake run play, so the quarterback gets the ball, he goes to hand it off to the running back, but it's a fake, so the running back runs forward, and then like the quarterback is going to do sort of like a quarterback sneak or a quarterback run or whatever, and he basically runs at his offensive line, doesn't find the gap, and runs right into one of his offensive linemen who is blocking for him. And just basically runs full force into his arse and fumbles ah. the ball. <laughs> so yeah. Basically, the ball bounces off his ass. It, it well, has no. its own Wikipedia page, Paul. The I will butt fumble has its own Wikipedia page. I will, I will, I will look. I will look I for the. I will look for the video. I will look for the video on YouTube and I will put it in the group chat. Oh, wonderful! There is a reason, <laughs> and you will understand why the New York Jets are called the butt fumble. <laughs> it's, all, it's all summed up in that one perfect clip. And that oh. is something I will show you later. Do you know, mate? It it really bad. The last the last quarterback that actually won a game against Tom Brady in the playoffs was that quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Who? Ryan Tannehill. Mark Sanchez. I was going to say Ryan Tannehill won the um, fucking wild card game against um, New England. Yeah, yeah, everyone fucking beaches. Oh, maybe it, before, <laughs> maybe it was until that maybe, point. Maybe, well, maybe, it was, maybe it was Mark Sanchez before Ryan Tannehill. Possibly. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that's what all the people that beat the Patriots are great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, almost everyone this season, man. But, you know. Oh, <laughs> she's so funny, yeah. <laughs> Not all get to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think you got, your teams are going to do this year? Like, where else do you think they're going to make fucking it? Fucking tank. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm praying for a tank. Christ above. Yeah, because you know the, the, what, the I, natural, I, natural I, tank. I, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, I, I'll tell you something, Ant. My team, about like six, seven games into the season, really went on sort of like the mission to tank. And I'm telling you, bar like maybe the GM hire being a little bit sort of like questionable, I'm quite optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to seeing what we'll do with this next season. I, um, <laughs> I mean, sort of like with the Jags, I'd say... I mean, like, I'm not expecting instant success because, like, with one of my one of my teams sort of, like, follow, you know, in, like, soccer is Liverpool Football Club. And, you know, there was a, there was a time a few years ago where we got Jürgen Klopp in. And... I wasn't expecting major success right there and then. We're going to be competing with fucking, you know, Premier League and Champions League titles. I realised that there was a process to it. And mm-hmm. 
you know, I sort of look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They've got all this potential, all this potential talent. And I'd say if we made a push for if we made a push for the playoffs, but if we were sort of like say come up short of week seventeen, then I wouldn't call that a disastrous season. In all That's, fair. That's fair. And then you can uh, sort of like build on it for next year, possibly. Yeah. What are you thinking, uh, Ant? I'm just thinking if we buy someone who can, or we get someone who can throw a fucking football. Uh, I've half a mind to throw myself in the fucking hat, if I'm going to be honest with you. Mitch Trubisky. I mean, Mitch Trubisky. I was going to say Mitch Trubisky. You know what? I'd be absolutely thrilled. Because let's be honest, I... at least he knows what coloured kit his team's in. I'd, I Honestly, I, I... I, Cam Newton, I'm sure you're a lovely, lovely man. But sweet baby Jesus, don't come. Mitch, just don't. Just, Mitch, just don't. Please, he's, he's please, stop. He's, please stop. Please <laughs> stop. It's the definition of a one-season wonder. Maybe so, but just think about this. He's right. At least Mark, Mitch Trubisky can throw it to the right team. I'm staring down the barrel of Jameis' 30 interception Winston. Yeah, but that's before that's before he got that his fucking laser eye there? surgery. That's that before he got his laser eye surgery. And yeah. to be honest with you, he hasn't thrown a football since he got that laser eye surgery. Yeah, so, you know. He, <laughs> he threw five I don't know, I don't know if you hope, I don't know if you hope five. he had Star Trek sort of cure that with his, <laughs> with his talent as well as his eyes. I don't think his eyes were the problem to begin with. To be, I think it was the fact that he couldn't fucking throw a football. <laughs> I think that was maybe if they gave him something like, fucking like robotic arms. That might help. I'll turn him into Jacks out of Mortal Kombat. Yes, I'm. I, I'm. Uh, that. That's who will. <laughs> Jack out of Mortal That's a good one. Future quarterback. Uh, let's fucking sign I've Inspector got, Gadget. He'll do the job. Back. <laughs> that, that's our options. Robocop. Let's fucking have it, eh? <laughs> Jesus. Terminator. Oh, Any more robots? I'm running. I'm running out of here. <laughs> I've run out of robots. Yeah. No. The Patriots. Like, if, they don't tra- if they don't trade up. <laughs> Or select someone in the second round. Mitch Trubisky is a free agent, and in other words, I'm in for all this is available as well. I'm in for a very depressing time uh, this autumn. Yeah, so. You like uh, that, Paul? You could get big dick, Nick. Yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't I'd, wish. What a as, Super Bowl! <laughs> He's won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but he's the, the definition of a situational quarterback. Bon Paul. So you call? No, Bunkle. Cool. He was yeah. outshone at Jacksonville by the moustache that is Gardner guys, Minshew, guys, who is uh, mediocre guys, at best. In the guys, I appreciate you trying to solve the, the, the problem, which is A, my life, and B, the New England Patriots. But <laughs> I, 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 I just, you know, don't waste your breath. I think both are lost causes, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I mean... <laughs> well, well, maybe you say this in sort of like, you know, a month's time when sort of like uh, Bill Belichick has worked his magic. Yeah. In a month's time, if we've got a first or second pick, honestly, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so depressed. There's nothing worse than seeing the quarterback you've like, admired for years go to another team and win a Super Bowl where your actual team just tanks. It's it, oh, not, not even tanks. It's almost like a slow death, really. He didn't just sort of stab repeatedly more than push the knife in once very fucking slowly. It's one of them. It was horrible. It was horrible to watch because I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, I did know 90% of what was going to happen was I was in for a very depressing evening. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you t- Sunday mate. evenings are bad enough because you've got Monday coming the day after but when you're watching Cam Newton under centre and him literally have to think who to throw it to he didn't even have like a, a primary sort of read, it was just like oh, that one uh, well, you know. t- to be fair, I mean, it, you know he was throwing to no one you know, it, 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 what, read, what what offensive skill position players have the Patriots got Julian Edelman, uh, Julian Edelman, and that's it. Yeah, uh, Julian Edelman at like what mid thirties and can run a five yard in, and that's about it. Yeah. Oh great! I, know, thought, I, I was actually quite hopeful of like Julian Edelman doing well, and now that you put it like that, there's there's literally no reason for me to watch the sport anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, shut up! Uh, uh, mate, that's it for me. Hey, Anthony, Anthony, I'm a Liverpool football club fan. 
given the rot that we're fucking in at the moment, I'm still going to be fucking watching Saturday and just sort of like be going, uh, okay. But yeah, it, you know, it's part of my life. It's same with same with NFL is just sort of like it's part of my life, and no matter how shit the team are doing, I'm going to be I, fucking watching. To be fair, Anna, at the end of the day, as as City fans, I love we, how it's turned into an intervention. This, <laughs> well, well, I, 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 I feel it's hacked. Are you okay? I feel it's hacked too. I, 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 as Man City fans who have experienced true and utter disappointment being relegated to the old League Two and having to play Blackpool in the first game of the season, we know what true disappointment is. And at the end, you will out of the fires like a phoenix (laughs) and win the Premier League on several occasions. And yet you still fail to make a Champions League final. Uh, I'm sorry, what was this? (laughs) I think the Bears won't make the playoffs this year. To be honest, but to be honest, Paul, it depends what they do. Yeah, it depends what they do because it, it, it's, it's 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 like I said to you in sort of like the start of the season. You can't go wrong with that defense that you've got. You cannot go wrong with that defense. It's keeping hold of that defense. That's the issue right now. Well, it's um, keeping hold of that defense and actually building up some sort of an offense. Because... Yeah, it was non. It was non-existent. Let's be honest. It was non-existent. Let's it be was... honest. You 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 capitalized on sort of like. Many people's fuck ups, mainly the Atlanta Falcons, yes. um, <laughs> who became an instant meme throughout the season. Um, but it, 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 in all honesty, yeah, it's it's one of two things: a, if you can keep that core of a defensive unit, because I'll be honest with you, as a Jacksonville Jags fan, you don't want to lose that core of a defensive unit because you end up in a one and fifteen season. Yep, that's why. That's uh, where we would have been, I think, without a bit of luck. And I like that defense. That's where we would have been because that offense was fucking dire to watch. Dreadful. It was dire. It was sheer luck that we won. We went in that run at the beginning of the season. Sheer luck. I, I think. It's, I think it's literally down to the elite running back that he had. Mm. I, 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 I honestly think he was the main driving force, which is ironic because that's the same thing as the uh, Tennessee Titans. Yep. Yeah. And how the fuck we managed to actually beat Tom Brady and the Buccaneers at some point in the season, I have absolutely no idea how we managed that. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea. You get the odd shock result here and there. Throughout the thing there. is, that it was Nick Foles who was quarterbacking. Yeah. That's, it, it's... He's got Brady's number. Foles to the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Do you know what? In sort of like, you know, if he's there as sort of like a backup QV to, you know, I don't know, like Brian Hoyer or whatever. I mean, you know, just 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 comes in for sort of like the situational awareness. To be fair, Nick Foles does seem to get under Brady's skin, so it's one of them that I noticed. So he's got his number. Exactly. So I would do that. But um, for me, keep the defense, rip the offense apart, the heart for Robinson, keep him. Yep. And just oh, he's a free agent, isn't he? As well. Yeah. That's unless you franchise tag him. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to try and keep hold of him as well. So it could be a whole new bleeding, you know, like offense we need. And yeah, it's not going to be this season. So it's, I can't see it happening. I can't see it happening. Be inter- still going to be interesting, though, as as every NFL season has been. Well, this season, oh, this, yeah, yeah. Well, this season at least we've got a first round pick. So <laughs> just oh. don't spend it on the fucking tight end again. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, hopefully not. We're hopefully it'll be either a fucking quarterback, some some sort of half decent quarterback. So I don't think, obviously we're not going to get a dealed one, or we trade up for like someone like I don't know. Like we said, we were looking like we might be getting wins, but could be getting wins. Why not? I I, I, did, I really like Carson Wentz. I don't understand. I understand he was a bit poor this season, but he was trying to do everything on his own. It's offensive you know, line. The the, 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 the thing is about Carson Wentz is just sort of like. You have to judge him with a decent offensive line because that offensive line for the Philadelphia oh, Eagles was yeah. utter trash. It was trash this season. And you look at the season where where Foles won the Super Bowl for him. It was the number one graded offensive line, and mm. and Wentz was having an MVP season until he got injured. You know, so it you've got you've got it 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 spins in roundabouts really. You know, and like I think a first round pick and they'll. 
I'll probably get slated for it right now. Khalil Mack as as a package to get Carson Wentz is more than worth it. Ooh. You're getting a franchise quarterback Ooh. for a defender who's on a decline and a f- and a mid round first round pick. I don't know about Khalil Mack, mate. No, I, I don't know no. about Khalil Mack. He's what, like, what, yeah, no. What, what other pieces are you gonna? What other pieces do the Bears seriously have that anybody's interested in? This is it. You, this you don't sacrifice. You don't sacrifice your generational fucking defensive back. He's not well. No, you you, you can. He's a key core of that offer. It is a key core of that defense. I should and say. He's, he's sack you're solving one problem, but you're creating his sack another. Sack numbers have declined each year he's been in Chicago. Mm. And Travation's starting to show his age. So. You know, at the end of the day, shift the, he's going to be he's on a massive contract. Shift that you bring Carson Wentz in, who's on a massive contract, and becomes the new face of your franchise for the next ten years. I mean, Carson mm. Wentz is what four, four been there for been a, been in the league what four five years twenty seventeen something like that yeah you know so it, it's it's no different to I mean the the Rams trade for Stafford. <laughs> yeah, but the fucking the Rams are run by Stan Kroenke, who who's fucking yeah. also who also owns Arsenal Football Club, and you go ask an Arsenal fan if they think they're run properly. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> they got Jared Goff into a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford's never won a playoff game. He was carried by that fucking defense. And you go, go watch, go watch that Super Bowl. Go watch that Super Bowl against the Patriots, which, which. In I'm all four sure of my Super Bowls that I've watched, is the most boring fucking game I've ever fucking I watched. Agree. It was that terrible. was all about the fucking defense. Yes. That was all about the defense, about the Patriots cutting off fucking Jared Goff, and he's shown multiple times against the Rams this season that he can't fucking lead them back into a Super Bowl. That was all the defense of the Rams that got them there. I'm say- all I'm saying is, you give up what you need to get yourself. A franchise quarterback. There is nothing more important in the NFL than having a franchise quarterback. And they traded two draft picks to get Jared Goff. They traded two draft picks to get rid of Jared Goff. Yeah, that's why they've had no fucking first round draft picks for years. Yeah, yeah, because they need. He was the last first round draft pick, and they traded two draft picks to fucking get him, and they've traded two to get fucking rid of him. But they because they wanted Matthew Stafford, who is now their franchise quarterback for two years because he'll no doubt retire but it's the having that chance without a franchise quarterback you can't win the Super Bowl but at the same time as well if you don't have a decent offensive line to protect that franchise quarterback he's going to become well he's going to experience what Carson Wentz has experienced this season and getting absolutely battered to high heaven yeah true but I mean you look Brady's offensive line was bang average Really, at the end of the day, you know, and you can you can get away with you, you you can hide an offensive line if you have a franchise quarterback who plays in the correct manner. Yeah, mm. you can. You know, look at look at look at look at Josh Allen. Yeah, uh, he's a bit, a bit of a different story because he's so athletic, but his offensive line is bang average to poor, mm. but. Because he's such a, because he is a generational talent. Because he is a f- true franchise quarterback. Look how good he is. The Ravens need a great offensive line because they have a running back playing quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> get no arguments from me on that. The Saints, uh, the Saints they, needed a great offensive line because Drew Brees can't move. And look at what happened when the when when he got found out that he couldn't move. He fucking he fumbled for fun. He can't throw deep balls either. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well it's, it, it, it'll be interesting because sort of like it's around about like mid-March where um, sort of like um, anybody who's eligible to be franchise tag- tagged or like anybody who's up for free agency, teams can start putting bids in for it. So we've got like a, about a month or so with like quietness and then sort of like yeah. by the time mid-March comes around... Uh, I mean, if 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 last season's free agency is anything to go by, it's sure to be a wild fucking ride. Well, th- yeah, there's that, and there's going to be a lot of players available as well. 
because a lot mm. of players are getting cut because the salary cap's gone down. Yep. Which it completely books the trend. So the cal- salary cap was over two over two hundred million this year, and it's projected to be uh, around one hundred eighty five million. Yeah. So you've got a lot of contracts that you got to, that people are getting rid of. So it means a lot more good veteran players will be available. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the Saints have to get rid of a fucking whole side of the team. Yeah. But... <laughs> 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 to be honest, you could probably get two get rid of two thirds of that salary cap with Michael Thomas. Well, I suppose you kind of got to keep Thomas, but I can see Cam Jordan going to clear up some space, and then after that ex- expensively built defense, which I really like, will cost a lot of money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we shall see. It'll be um, an interesting 2021-2022 season. So, well, like I said, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it another listen, watch even. I've um, enjoyed it this year. So, good rookie season. Yeah. And I think I got quite lucky getting to the playoffs. True. Oh, no, folks. Wow. And as well, as well, I feel I should mention, um, because it's been lost with all sort of like the transfer talk and all that. Um we set up a uh, NFL predictions league oh, for the season. <laughs> 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 no! You seriously, you're trying to drive the fight that it's just like, hey, Ant, guess what? Patriots are shit. Guess what? You came last. Typing <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> <Hey>. him. <laughs> guess what? AEW is shit too. <laughs> 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 Oh, he's back. <laughs> hey, I will just say, I will just say with regards to sort of like the prediction leagues, I knew my team was shit, which is why most of the time I fucking predicted against them. <laughs> it, it, pfft, you know, as I wasn't the one that was like put faith in my team when I probably shouldn't have done. Um, but yeah, to, with, with regards to sort of like the predictions league, there was like six of us involved. Um, it, got... it felt like five at one point. I was, I was just in a world of my own. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it got to a point where I literally couldn't predict the fucking past, let alone the future. <laughs> <For fuck's sake. laughs> <laughs> you, you lot being Nostradamuses over here, fucking hell. <laughs> and, and you are the reigning WrestleMania predictions champion, mate. So at least that's something. Yeah, only because, yeah, the longest rain, it was a pissing pandemic in the middle of it. Let's be honest, I'd have got rinsed in that last one. I couldn't tell me, me arse from me elbow. Well, neither could I, because I had no fucking interest in it. But regardless, no. um, <laughs> when, we, when we, 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 got to the, we got to the Super Bowl and it came, back, <laughs> came, down to, um, it came down to myself and Paul, which I was quite okay. impressed with. I was quite impressed with, given that it was your debut season, but... Ultimately, he decided to back uh, Paddy Mahomes against uh, against Tom Brady, and you know, yeah. given my wealth, well, wealth of experience, given my more experience of, I just always thought it was like, mm, yeah, it's better not to bet against Tom Brady. So, yours truly came out on top. I've been the inaugural, the inaugural R A D, the inaugural, the inaugural, the inaugural Rad Zone Predictions Champion, and. Uh, Here's hoping that I uh, am able to defend my crown for, for next season. Absolutely. At least it's not as bad as the old wrestling prediction that I used to do. I mean, mm. once upon a time, I did like a promotion, which shall not be mentioned. I used to run their prediction league, and you had a good, healthy following in it. At one point, we had like over 30-odd players. Mm. So I was doing that, like, marking all their predictions like it was a fucking nightmare. But I did it. It was fun. And one year, we decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to up the ante. We're going to make trophies. We're going to get trophies made. So if you win the league, you get a trophy, yada, 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 yada. And obviously, because I'm playing it and I'm doing it out of, it was transparent, so we did it in the comments section, so I couldn't cheat. It was, everyone <laughs> could see it. You could see the editing on it and everything. So I thought, right, this one year, I've never, I've never won it. We've done this like, like the fourth year in a row we were doing it. And I thought, right, we'll do trophies this year. And I thought, right, okay, brilliant. I'll spend money. I got it, I got it sponsored and everything. Someone else paid for the trophy. And I'm like, right, okay, right, let's do this. So we ended up doing it, and it ended up being, um, I think, a two-way horse race at the end. 
And I ended up winning my own fucking trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like have like a big ceremony where you awarded it to yourself? <laughs> that <would be> brilliant, <laughs> that. Yeah, I just handed it Here to you. Go, a me. Thank you, me. Yes. I'm just like for thank <laughs> myself. No, I didn't. <laughs> Thankful for that. But yeah, I didn't do it. Um, the year after, we actually did trophies as well, but I ended up like walking away from it for reasons. So we still ended up paying for the trophy. I had to pay for it out of my own hat pocket that time, but. I still did, and I handed it over. And this time, I didn't win it. Okay, well, mm. I think I finished. I think I finished twelfth that year. Yeah. So it's quite. I was quite pleased about that in a weird kind of way. Right, was but, there anything to predict in the end? There isn't now, is there? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's, that's why I'm hoping we sort of like you know this next season of um, the NFL predictions league. You know, if it was like well, I'd, I've I've raised sort of like you know this 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 query of um you know everybody who participates like everybody chuck like a a tenner in or whatever and the eventual winner of that <laughs> great, <pick-ins>, like, <laughs> great. Yeah. I, i'm gonna lose and lose 10 quid this year great <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you know what? Yeah, just tell me who's going to win. Ball. You know what? I may as well just hold my cash out and just wait to hand it over to the winner, fucking personally. Because <laughs> let's be honest, fuck me. Right, I may as well just send a tenner to all of you just to be on the fucking safe side. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me! I'm going to be out of pocket. Shit, me. <laughs> get better yeah. at po- get better at fucking predicting sports events. Then you tool. Oh, I'm done. Let me just ring up my friend Mystic Meg and she'll fucking and she'll <laughs> fucking help me out. Oh, yeah, a nice little team of me, Mystic Meg, and Michael Fish. And fucking good at predicting stuff, aren't we? <laughs> Fuck me. Who's Michael Fish? You don't know who Michael Where's Fish the man? is. He wasn't, dude. He wasn't even alive when Michael Fish did that cop that thing, and he knows who Michael Fish is. <laughs> He predicted. He said everything was going to be all right, and then there was a massive storm that killed like four people. Oh, right. So, <laughs> so, oh, we're going to have a nice clear night. There's going to be no yeah. problems. Next thing you know, trees are getting blown down. Oh, so, okay. Jeez, well, man. Yeah, as, as I was saying, it's just sort of like um, a bit of incentive for the next uh, the next NFL prediction league. I was just thinking of sort of like everybody chipping in a tenner, and the eventual winner of next season's league would get a. Um, Will get to pick a jersey of their choice, like an NFL jersey, because I'm not. I don't think you've got one, Paul. I have not got an NFL jersey now. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, there's a little bit of an incentive there to sort of like, you know. Absolutely. Oh, oh hey up. Is he Uncle's getting the Saints one? Is he getting the Saints one? Oh, hang on, wait. I'm counting how many I've got. Five. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you stuck them to the roof? I got like, I got like, oh, a, hey like a hand thing. Oh, oh, right. you know, they're all hung on a rail oh, on my roof. Not like a hangy thing. <laughs> <laughs> they're all hung on a rail on my roof. They're on my hangy thing. Look. Here's, a, here's the thing. I don't tend to do sports tops normally. I did have at one point a McLaren Formula One top, and I've got a Blackpool um, Yeah, I was going to say, you've got, the, you've got the old school Blackpool top from when they were in the Premier League very briefly. Yes, I have got that. We included Premier League badges, might I add. Mm-hmm. And, and I've got... Um, <laughs> I think I've got a, 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 a num- like a bog standard goalie top that I wear, but that's about it. Whether you go in and play footy, but that is literally all I have. Sports like sports clothing wear because nah, the main sports I follow is like motorsport, and it's like yeah, I'm not paying. Well, football will be another one. Yeah, Bunkle seems to have left. But... Yeah, Bunkle seems to have left. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's... Oh, no. he's back. Oh, he's back. Oh, there you go. It's always <laughs> a. Uh... It's always a tradition, like either either if I'm uh, I'm at Clan Morrison or I'm at um, Matt's place, we always go to, well, we always go around to one another's house, stick NFL Red Zone on, get a takeaway in, and it's just a fucking fun time. And that sounds good. You know, I, 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 I feel as if you're uh, you're missing out. So yeah, you know, might be a little, might be a little bit of an incentive for next season. Yeah, I'm, gonna have, I'm definitely going to have the the wings and. Yeah. Um... A few wings out and putting a bit of a spread for a Super Bowl slash WrestleMania party next year uh, around yeah. at our gaff. Hopefully, we can have the because I had the when uh, lockdown was slightly lifted, you can have the rule of six and what have you. Yeah, I had the telly outside in back and it was quite warm, it was very nice. We have the heater anyway, so it's, it's a good gaff. It's a good gaff now that we've got the 
the uh, the garden sorted. Yeah, looks like I, I can now. Well, that's another bit of news since we've been doing since we've not ratted. Is um, I can now drive, so I can now take myself to places. You've been warned, people. You've been uh, warned. Yes. Yes, you I don't actually... do as you're told. We'll get Paul to mow you the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got be, you've, 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 you've got to be careful, though. I do drive a Ford car, so therefore you would do more damage to the car than I would do to you. So, <laughs> well, I don't know. You know. <laughs> so I love my little car, though. It's, it's amazing. Because you sat it's that low to the ground in it, it feels like you're doing 5,000 miles an hour. It's, it's what amazing. we call kneecap height. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And the best thing about it is, when I do hit you, I'm that low to the ground. You will just go over the top of the car, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a giant wedge, so you just slide up it as well. I've just got this image of just going along the promenade. I've just, going, I've just shut my eyes now, and just just seeing that the, the nice Blackpool beach and the, the skyline, and just seeing silhouettes of people cartwheeling. <laughs> all the- like jumping like up like, like that, just, just going down like, like yeah, just going all the way down the promenade, one after another, <laughs> like fucking lemmings. <laughs> you know? I was going to say, say it'll be like Wallace and Gromit in the wrong trousers when fucking Wallace is sort of like in the actual wrong trousers themselves. He's just sort of like going doing cartwheels in the air through the fucking estate. <laughs> Would be shot. Would That's be what shot. I've envisioned. <laughs> Ah, I'm taking the piss out of my car. Leave it alone. Yeah. Only I can do that. It's a good little runner. It's a good car. I like it. Um, to the point where Morrison was like, bring it to mine. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I've seen what you do to your Mondeo, and you ain't doing that to my fucking car. Fuck off. I, I, I was in the car when he drove to us to and from Manchester for the Metallica gig the in Metallica. 2019. Mm. I saw the speed on his Speedo. The car that his, he went at, my car might not reach. Yeah. So, and he and he dared yeah. claimed in sort of like a Valentine's post that he was the better driver than his other half. I think we need to make yeah, them race. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think we need to lay that gauntlet down that the Morrison clan need to have a race to decide this once and for all. No, because fucking because because no, because fucking Alan because <laughs> Alan would do a fucking Richard Hammond. <laughs> I'm not, fucking, I'm not fucking risking it for him for his sake alone. <laughs> It's fine. Alan will be fine. He's no, a good he driver, remember? That. He's a good driver, remember? Well, according to him, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that should be the, the anti-speed and advert. Uh, should be Richard Hammond <laughs> trying to remember his own wedding day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Classic Frankie Boyle. Yeah. She I was thought you were just going to say, just have Alan... Just, just, I thought, I thought you were just... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I thought you just meant to, well, to say, just have Alan stood in a correct, in a, like a black screen. We just have Alan stood there and goes, I am a good driver. You know what? If that was going to be the advert, you know what it should be? It should be that, that Facebook post where, that post where he claimed he was a better driver. Just that. Then it fades to black and all you see is like a crumpled up Mondeo. That's, that's it. <laughs> and then no words, nothing, nothing. Just that. And then just like think safe, whatever the fuck they're coming with now. And then stunned silence. <laughs> uh, UK oh. government, if you're listening, I am available for uh, advertisement ideas. Fucking <laughs> <Okay>, hell. <laughs> What's the fantastic idea? Speaking of fantastic ideas, there's um, a post that's been going viral recently. Um, and... I'm starting to think this was more actually on purpose than it was like an accident. I don't know if you've heard about the woman that decided, do you know what? I've, um, I need to uh, sort my hair out. And um, I've run out of hairspray. And I'm just going to rummage around the house. <gasps> what is this orange bottle I have found? Gorilla glue? Oh, God. Why are we giving attention to stupid people? Oh, oh I'm not giving a positive. Don't worry, I'll get there. I'll get there. It's not uh, just attention. That's all they want. Just well, attention seekers. Well, You're up there with vegans and fucking <laughs> uh, everything else. Like the people whole TikTok thing is a whole. Gen- change gender when they go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, they wake up and they suddenly speak French. Off. Oh, yeah. Fuck off. Oh, these free tips to get you a girl in five seconds. Oh, fuck off. Oh yeah. Jesus I wish I were that Christ. fucking lucky. <laughs> uh, 
it's uh, the people, it's the attention seekers. That's all they are. And this, this obviously, it. this idiot. This is it. She's, she's an absolute idiot who's just, just an arse. As so you, sir, put, oh, fucking you've me. just shortcutted my point, sir. You'll have to give context, Paul, because I'm a little bit in the dark about this. Particular... Right, so, so what this lady has decided to like decided to do was think, right? I've run out. Of, I've run out of hairspray. What I'm going to do? I need something to hold my hair in place. So Which she I had that problem. yeah. <laughs> but she literally decided to spray a ton of gorilla glue into her hair and spread it all over her head to keep her head down. Now this glue apparently was in her hair for an entire fucking month and did not <sighs> shift. Right. Fucking hell. Now bear in mind, right? I had a I have like a like a box on the front of my house. Right? A box on the front of my house and it was hanging off constantly. It's basically where the internet connection comes from the play floor. The well the phone line comes from the floor into the house, basically, right? And I used to keep thinking it was the um kids kicking it off the wall. It wasn't, it was just really bad build quality. Mm. Yay. So I decided <laughs> I tried epoxy on it and everything to get it to stay on. Wouldn't work. Gorilla Glue, on the other hand, I put it on there. It's been now stuck to the wall solid for four fucking years. Mm. With Gorilla Glue. And this it woman... Worse, sticky stuff. Yeah, some <laughs> plastic to brick wall. <laughs> right? And this woman has stuck it in her fucking hair. And they're like, oh, this looks brilliant. And to be fair, it looks shiny. It looks very straight. But it's not going to fucking move, let's be honest. You know, you could go with a fucking, you know, an F5 bleeding hurricane and it wouldn't move. You know, yeah. So she goes this. It gets all this attention. I can't get this glue out my hair. So her doctors offered to do it for free. Get get it all out. Do it for nothing. But then, just after that hit, someone's made a fundraiser. Oh no! What? Someone's made a fundraiser for this lady. And, oh for fuck! And say. as 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 of reading this, as of about. Four hours ago, maybe, maybe five St- hours don't ago. Don't tell me, don't, don't. If it's anything more than a pound, I'm fucking off. Yeah, I, I, if I was you, I'd shut your door on the way out because it's $21,000 that's Fuck been made. Fuck off! What? Yeah. I'm probably higher now. Right, okay, it's coming out for this. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> You had your little TikTok fame. You put the silly glue. It's really funny. Yeah, yeah. But no, there's people out there who think you're fucking stupid. Yes. So, so stupid enough, they've decided to throw 21 grand at you. On a level of stupidity, it's quite high. So, no, 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 if you could just a, that's, that's take that 21 good. grand and give it to charity, where it's going to be to put to some use, not... Your f- stupid fucking brain, who thinks it's a great idea to stick fucking super glue, super duper glue in their fucking hair. <laughs> fucking super duper glue. <laughs> if, you're, if, if you thought that was a good idea, I wouldn't trust you with a fucking pair of scissors, let alone 21,000 quid. Okay? I've seen two-year-olds know the difference between that. Just, 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 just stop. Oh. Please stop. Just live your life. I'm sure you're very happy. You're gonna be very happy. Fantastic. Great. Get the get the glue out of your fucking hair. Yeah. We realised that was a bad idea because I fan- apparently you had to experience that to realise. Oh. Be happy. Donate the twenty one grand. And just try not to attention seek. Okay. Too late. <laughs> a bit, a bit late for that. Just just, yeah. just stop now. People people are laughing at you. More than you think. You an and, idiot. And she's laughing all the way to the bank with those that fucking twenty one yeah. grand. And this and... is precisely the problem with society. We're breeding yeah. fucking stupid idiot we're celebrities. Rewarding, we're rewarding stupidity. Yes, we are. Yes. Oh, there's a kicker to this as well, by the way. There is another kicker to this. There was a gentleman that went, ah, this is fake. It's not real. They're not put gorilla oh, in the no. hair. Do it himself. So what he decided to do to try and disprove this was, you know, them red solo cups that you can get, that you play Oh, it's just the blood that stuck it to his nose. He stuck it to his nose and chin. And he stuck it round his mouth and it stuck and he had to go to fucking ER for it. Fucking penis. A fucking penis. Can I just take a a wild stab in the dark, to quote Blackadder, and just say, uh, I'm guessing these people are from America? They kind of might be. 
Okay. Sure. Okay. So, America, the land of the free, home of the brave. Um, yeah. More like the, the land of the stupidity. Apparently, the greatest country on earth. We elected Donald Trump. Nothing else yeah. needs to be said. Mm-hmm. To be to be honest with you, I, I consider Madagascar more of a country than fucking America this minute. I mean, at least they had all them animals working together and making a society, and I, you know, they all lived. They all lived pretty happy to me. I mean, I know some of them left to go and live in Africa, but that's their. Fa- but some of them stayed. I know they did had quite well. They had a system. They had King Julian, and he ruled, and it was fantastic. So that's that being said, I still want to go over there and experience everything that they've got to offer. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like for example like one of my best mates um pretty much like fiance who like lives like sort of like connecticut way i <laughs> i like i've been talking to you talk a few years about like wants to go over there and one of her like favorite pastimes is like going with her father who is a um who is a police officer with the new york police force and um one of her favorite past pastimes to do with her dad is to go to the uh the shooting range and sort of like basically you know go there and sort of like shoot at a few targets and i sort of like made the the offhand comment of just sort of like oh do you know what i'd love to do if i ever get over to america i'd love to sort of like go over there and sort of like you know sample what it's like to sort of like you know actually go to sort of like a gun range and actually sort of like shoot a proper gun but there's probably like too much like red tape and litigation and all this the whole and country's went, a gun range she just went no no not really you know it's just sort of like, it's 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 not that big of a deal, and I'm just sort of like there, just going, oh, okay, just right, okay. <laughs> I know what I'm. <laughs> I'm added to my list when I eventually go over to America. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't want to well, shoot a gun. Yeah, the thing is, is the thing. The thing about it is, if you can go to a Walmart and buy a gun legally, as long as you're of legal age, then thinking about it, it's it, it. It doesn't really seem that much of a a big step. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's like walking to Asda, isn't it, and buying a Glock. It really is. It's literally that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's mad. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, Anthony. Uh, you were saying. No, I've lost it. But you, you mentioned, <laughs> you just got the fiance, the, you mentioned about your friend's fiance or whatever. And I was just got onto the point of, like, uh, because of this COVID thing and not having I mean, seen people, mm. this, it's got to the point now. I mean, in the past, I've been like gone to like family reunions and cousins, like cousins have come up to me. Oh, this is, this is my, uh, my son, Tim. He's five now. And I'm like, fucking didn't even know you were pregnant. Like, I just feel like the time traveler's wife every time I turn up now. <laughs> and especially like, I'm really worried about family gatherings because if we're going to have my cousins around, he's this, like, they've got like dietary requirements and I fucking hate that because this, this Braden can't eat blue. What? Braden can't, firstly, don't name your kid Braden. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, blue isn't even like a natural colouring in. It's, it's, but the only time you ever s- see it in them um, is in like water, and that's only because of the the, the, the bottom bottom of it. Uh, it, it, it baffles me beyond no. I mean, what flavour is blue? Bubblegum. Bubble, Bubblegum, yeah. But most, I mean, what what like f- it's, any it's... food do you know that is blue? It's not a flavouring, it's a colouring. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But what foods do you know that are naturally blue? Blueberries. Oh, no. Blueberries are fucking purple! <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to happen, you said blueberries. <laughs> it's, blue, it's, blue, it's like water and like the ocean, and that has sharks in it. Right? Sharks! Right? <laughs> blue means sharks! <laughs> <laughs> fucking oh, hell. God. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, God, yeah, like but I just I I relate it back to my point of just sort of like why are we rewarding this stupidity by there being news articles about it and there being sort of like you know being any sort of like media attention? It reminds me of the fucking time that this like it's like this newscast, um, like this talk show in sort of like Florida or like this this news anchor in Florida. Just basically walked off set because they were going to be talking about a um, a piece where one of the Kardashians ha- got like a new rabbit and they named it. And he basically walked off set just like going, I'm not taking part of this because it's not fucking news. Like I, I got into this profession to talk about like 
the proper, proper fucking news. And he's like, basically commenting, this isn't fucking news. What have they done? What have they earned to sort of like, you know, get this great big massive following? And, you know, it, it, that's just... <laughs> the Kardashians are one... One little smidge of sort of like what's wrong with a the general public and J- and b modern day society. Yeah, can't argue with that. Can't argue with that one bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's spot on. Spot on. Uh, Buncle, have you got a topic, mate? Um. Well, <clears throat> I to- mm, mm, mm. my topic is it's about stupid people. <laughs> um, I'll lead you to it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was my wife who actually turned me to this. Uh, apparently, oh, careful now. In a in a in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an NHS hospital, uh, they are no longer talking. Uh, basically, breastfeeding is you're not allowed to call it breastfeeding anymore, and you're not allowed to call it breast milk anymore. It is chest feeding oh. and human milk. Because uh, if men can menstruate too, and men can feed their children, I think I saw this. Was this a, 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 it's it's Brighton, isn't it? Brighton, Brighton and Old Hospital. That yeah, sort of. I believe that, it is. I believe Brighton it is. and Hove, two very different towns. They, they sort of like go head to head. I mean, Brighton people think that yeah. Hove people are posh because Hove people decide to put their kebab down before they squat and have a piss in the car. It, 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 it is called pavement. <laughs> They've described it as gender inclusive language. But here's the thing: they're talking about what was it? Men sort of like bleeding, giving off milk. Men can menstruate. Yeah, Apparently. healthy men, healthy men shouldn't be able to. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It it's... basically looked at that scene from Family Guy where Peter tries to breastfeed Stewie and just thought, "Yeah, that's possible." Yeah, yeah, you know, men want to breastfeed too. Oh, we can't call it breastfeeding. It's got to be chest feed. Yeah. Chest feeding, yes. I hope yeah. that doesn't catch on, because let's be honest, if that's the case, I'm boarding the Spanish train that Christy Burr sang about, and I'm joining God in that devil playing chess. For <laughs> <seven days. laughs> uh, shout out Christy Burr. It's a great song. It's a great song, but fucking hell, I wish I was on it at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Wait, I've, been to, I've been to Brighton, and what I thought was actually a pur- pink and purple sort of shell suit was, in fact, the flesh. <laughs> It was, it was oh, oh no. Oh I did that joke in Brighton. If well if you think I went they think I thought, sh- shut their bloody businesses myself the way they did it. <laughs> you know? The thing that struck me in Brighton uh, was a, a spanner as they, which they threw at me on the way out. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know. But yeah, this is, but this is just more the continuation of the PCing everything. I just think it's yeah. it really is it's ridiculous. Does 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 it, it follows on from all, always the uh, the I don't know panty liner tampon producing company yes. removing the feminine symbol from their logo because it's not gender inclusive. Well, what men need fucking panty liners? Oh, well, apparently, men ne- apparently there are men that. Need them and men that use them. What not for? real men? The only, I mean, I'm not, the, the only reason a man would even contemplate possibly even in an emergency situation using a tampon, well, not tampon, <laughs> even a fucking <laughs> <laughs> tampon is different. I've got like this image of like a brick glass in case of emergency on the wall. Dang, here we go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I'm on about a case of like if it's a situation where you've run out of toilet paper and there's nothing else to wipe on. Yeah. At the worst. And I mean the worst. This is, probably, this, is, this is probably a thing of just sort of like, you know, people getting offended for other people's sakes, even yeah. when the even when the problem isn't even sort of like a big one. It's and yeah, it's, it's, about, and, it's and, mountains out of mohills. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's an issue that nobody had, but whilst one person may have had an issue with it, they've got to change nobody, the entire system. Nobody has, nobody has ever had, and the vast majority of people don't give a flying fuck. No, most normal functioning people. Yeah. Again, or uh, what was it? What's that? What's that song? What's on Wrestling Soup, Lewis? Is it normal function humans or something like that? There's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's what is, most people are like that. They will like, oh, it's breastfeeding. That is that. That is a boob. It is not a fucking chest. It is a <laughs> boob. It's a breast where milk comes yeah. out of. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's we not a... It. It's men not men a, cannot do it. Men, men naturally can't do it. It's, well... If you're not, if you, if you unnaturally, I'm kind of against it as well. If I'm going to be yeah. very honest, I don't well. want someone sucking on my nips randomly. But here's <laughs> the thing. <laughs> weird. It, but this is brought up by the same fucking idiots that will stand in front of my meat aisle in like Lidl and like protest against. Oh, this chicken died when it was lonely. All right, I'll pick, pick a fucking another. I'll take my his mate with me and then. I'll cook him as well. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what this, just fucking? I don't care, right? <laughs> just stay out of. What is essentially not your business. Yeah. yeah. If you want your man to, to have your baby suck on a nipple, then do you do that. Go in your house, shut the door, do it yourself. Don't give it all of us because, yeah. no, it, just it, shut up. Here's the belt of fear as well, if you really want to think about it, go to sort of a fucking level. If this is coming from the NHS and they say to you, you know, breast is best because it's built for your child and it's got best for your child's nutrient. It's how it's... You know, it's a cost of built for your child, and you're supposed to let the mother breastfeed because it's, you know, it's best things for their child. Yeah, yeah. How the fuck is that coming from the dad? Well, it's fucking not, is it? It is. Breast even is if you sort of a, a yeah. family motto in my. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is, like, it's like if it comes from, uh, if you like, a dad breastfeeds, it's like that is not even if you could like you know, lactate. It's like, it's not custom made for your baby. This is a fucking ridiculous conversation. What are we on? <laughs> <you know? laughs> I'll, 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 We've talked I'll, about I'll many honest. things on this podcast. And now we're debating whether yeah. we can uh, squirt milk from our nipples. I'll be honest. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're talking about. Be honest, talking, I'll be honest with you. My, my background picture sort of like sums this topic up. <laughs> exactly. It's like... This is this sums up this whole thing absolutely perfectly. How this yeah, can be the only thing that can say this conversation is Jim Cornette at the minute. <laughs> what well, 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 I know is how the fuck can breastfeeding be gender neutral? It, how the fuck can it be gender neutral? It's not it, gender neutral it, because men don't have breasts. We can't do this. It's simple. Well, as I that. don't know. I've seen some things in a cricket changing room. I'll tell you that. For <laughs> yeah. Well, keep that. Well, keep your eyes to the floor from this point forwards, so then, mate. I'm well, retired. Uh, I, don't, I don't go in and there anymore. I'm all retired. right, let me, let me put this way. Let me, let me put this way. To quote, sort of somewhat pseudo quote, Paddy McGuinness, right? Fat Les could not could not breastfeed a crash. Let's just put it down <laughs> there. <laughs> he could not do it. It's not possible. He could not breastfeed a crash. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not possible. Uh... At all. You know, you do not have the equipment to do it. It is not possible. The equipment. You know, you know, you know, you know, it's not possible. <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, let me get me equipment. I'll be right for you. <laughs> oh my god! If there's if there's two words that don't belong in a sentence together, it's crash and equipment. <laughs> It's the crash of the future. Oh, <laughs> the inclusive future. The inclusive It's like two, uh, after two minutes of... <gasps> okay, I'm done now, love. Oh, they fucked off. Oh, Let's fuck. get to it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what a fucking ridiculous topic. I mean, it's... <sighs> yeah. How stupid a... Chest feeding. <laughs> just saying it just makes me it's, feel a little bit sick. Yeah, it so. sounds like what a bodybuilder would say when they're being a bit weird about you know, building up the chest. Oh, the chest feeding. <laughs> Can you imagine if they said that on like pumping iron or whatever? I'm feeding yeah, my chest. chest. His chest feeding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chest feeding sounds like a shit stripper name, really. <laughs> And the on the poll next, it's chest feeding. <laughs> Uncle, it, Uncle, it sounds like something you would fight in another podcast that you do, or chest feeder. Yes, yeah, it does, yes. <laughs> oh, a chest feeder, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've met her, she was actually quite nice. <gasps> <laughs> That's a challenge. 
That is a challenge for you, Bunkle. You need to mention the word chest feeder to Cookson and trying to make him make a monster out of that. And if well, you do that, I can imagine me absolutely wetting my pants while listening to that show. I don't want to hear the words chest and feeding ever again. <laughs> I've heard them enough in the last five minutes to last me a lifetime, especially together. <laughs> oh, hey. Fucking chest feeding, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, chest feeding just sounds so awful. <laughs> I've just got the image of, like, a fat brummy bloke eating a curry off his chest. That's all I've got. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <gasps> I've just worked it out. I've just worked it out. And what they want you to do is to smear that curry on your chest and just let your baby suck it off. Maybe this, is that's ta- it is. this is taking the weirdest fucking turn. Call it chest feeding. That's the weirdest thing that's ever fucking said. And the fact that it's not come from my mouth or someone else's is nothing short of astonishing. Back to the you know what? So- My idea was mad getting a brummy lad just naked by himself eating a cookie. But well, you got a baby involved, which is even <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't I wasn't part of that. I didn't hint at that. You got a baby involved, pal. Fucking <laughs> you know. hell. No, I did it. The <laughs> NHS did. <laughs> the NHS did that. <laughs> Bring it full fucking circle. <laughs> God almighty. Shit me sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> chest feeding. It's a load of shit. Move on uh, to something, please, for the love of fucking God. Yeah, I think we're, <laughs> we're nearly at two and a half hours, so I think we're nearly time for wrapping up. But I'm going to put uh, one more sort of like topic out there, and, and that is uh, recently there was something sort of announced that I'm a massive fan of. I know Lewis, so maybe looking forward to it. I don't know really too much about you two. Mass Effect Remaster. Hmm. All I can say is, I'm I'm very much interested in it, but given the fact that I've been burned quite recently in the past year by buying, well, by pre-ordering uh, Watch Dogs Legion and Cyberpunk 2077, I'm going to fucking wait until reviews come out on it before I part with my money. That is all I'm going to fucking say on the topic, because I've been burned far too much. By spending nearly like 90 quid on games I was really looking forward to and just being heavily disappointed. I adore Mass Effect. I adored yep. Mass Effect. Yep. It's the job that came out and I didn't want to adore it anymore. However, I loved the original series and this remaster series is exactly what they need and exactly what the fans need to sort of get build. everyone back on track a bit, I think. Yeah, build, think build, build confidence back up. Yeah. They can't afford to fuck it up. No. Literally, they cannot afford to. Particularly with the fact that there's sort of like, there's, well, I've, I've, I'm I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that they're making a new Mass Effect game they further are, yeah. down the line. They are, they are making a new Mass Effect game. This release of the remaster, I think, is a sort of like a rejog of the memory to give you in the more, like, more current consoles. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people may have got rid of their old ones and yeah. they can't play Mass Effect anymore unless you've got EA Play. Yeah. Or, or or Game Pass Ultimate, um, but it also they're starting to look a little bit dated, especially Mass Effect One. Now, yeah. what they've done, I've had, I've, what I've obviously read up on because I'm following it quite closely because I absolutely adore Mass Effect, like Ant does. And what apparently they're doing, they're sort of like doing textural and graphical upgrades to Mass Effect Two and Three. Mm-hmm. The one game that's getting the most work is Mass Effect 1. And what they're doing is they're making it less RPG and more towards what the other two were while okay. retaining the same sorts of gameplay. So, for example, all the characters will have be able, will have access to all the weapons, whereas on Mass Effect 1, if you played like a, um, a biotic, you only had access to pistols and things like that. Whereas you'd be able mm. to do your biotics and have an assault rifle, for example. The mechanics for the Mako, they've been upgraded. So they're going to, it's going to be easier to do stuff with the Mako. Uh, the graphics, obviously, are going to be overhauled. New textures, armors, you name it. And all the DLCs be involved. Apparently, over 40 different DLCs are going to be included with this. Came out. Um, the only one that they haven't got is Pinnacle Station for Mass Effect One because the data was corrupt on it. 
and they can't get it back. And if they redid it all, it would delay the game massively because it was a quite a big DLC. And one other thing that's been pointed out to me as well is that there'll be uh, about 300% more lens flare. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but as I say, it's just sort of like... Um, I mean, if you look at like good examples of sort of like remasters, um, sort of like I'm a part-time Twitch streamer, so a, a lot of my streaming has gone into sort of like playing the remastered remasters of the Yakuza games. Mm-hmm. Like at the moment, I'm sort of like about a quarter of the way through Yakuza Four, and the remasters for it have been sort of like really, really darn good. Like I mean, I've not, I, I didn't have a chance to play the originals because they all the originals were sort of like PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three, and around about sort of like the time that the PlayStation Three versions were in effect, I had an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, so I didn't have access to them. Um, but as I say, like the 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 Yakuza series is sort of like one of my it's 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 become one of my favorite series for sort of like the story alone, mm-hmm. and. You know, if if they can do justice to sort of like the Mass Effect trilogy as they've been able to do for sort of like the remasters of sort of like the Yakuza games, then I'll be very much interested. But as I say, I've been burnt a little bit too much with sort of like in terms of pre-ordering games in 2020. So obviously I'm going to wait until sort of like they, they come out and reviews come out and obviously sort of like your guys' import before I part yeah. away with my cash. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to be getting it. Um, from what I understand, the gameplay is unchanged, pretty much. So it's going to be the same sort of gameplay experience, but just mm-hmm. prettier sort of graphics. Mass Effect 1 is going to be the one that's going to have the, the biggest sort of jarring difference. But if it plays anything like the last two games, it's going to be a stellar game, even yeah. so. Um, they're still going to have the overheat mechanic in it as well. So instead of using clips... It's going to be the same sort of. You can fire for as long as you want, but then your yeah. engine, your gun, your gun's going to overheat, and you're going to have to wait. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think I will be getting it, and like you say, I think they're doing it to build up to Mass Effect Four, and yeah. it's uh, something that the fans have been crying out for is a remaster of Mass Effect, the Mass Effect ages. trilogy. Yeah, for ages yeah. and ages and ages, um, almost as long as the Final Fantasy VII remasters, I would say, yeah. or remake. Um, the my experience of remasters, I would say, is very limited. The two that spring to mind are, um, and these this this is going back. Um, was Conker's Bad Fur Day? So I've got live and reloaded. <laughs> That's a game. On the, I've got That's live. A game. I've got live and reloaded on the original Xbox, and that is a game. And you've also got. Um, what did I want? What else? What's the other one? Oh, that was it. Metal Gear Solid uh, Twin Snakes. Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny that you bring up Metal Gear Solid because I think like the only the only franchise that is sort of like I would want a remaster of a game more than Mass Effect would be the Metal Gear Solid trilogy, and that's only because I haven't played any of them. Like, I've played a t- teeny tiny little bit of the first game, but other than that, I'm a complete novice when it comes to the Metal Gear Solid game, and I really want to... I really want to play them, because I hear they're sort of like... They're, 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 well, they're lauded upon. They're fucking amazing. I mean, I've got every single title that's not been released on a handheld. Um, I was quite lucky, because I got... Well, I've got the HD remake... Remaster, sorry, on... So that's sorry, I do have the remasters for those as well. I'll tell a lie. But I've got the remasters for those on the Xbox 360. And then just before my wedding in 2019, I managed to find a collector's like sort of legacy edition, legacy yeah. collection, which is every single Metal Gear game that has ever been made up to Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm. I got that for a quid. And these are H- the HD remasters as well. Jesus. With the art book and everything for a quid, Jeez. I showed. And Zando came literally a couple of days before. It was just literally before the wedding, and Zander came down a couple of days later for the wedding. And he was nearly crying because his cot one cost like forty, fifty quid. <laughs> and I got it. I got it for a quid second hand, and it was mint. 
So it's like, yeah, I've got that. It's pride of place in the gaming area at this minute in time. Mm. But I've got all that. I've got Metal Gear Solid 4. I've got Twin Snakes and all that lot. So I've got... And I've got the uh, Metal Gear Solid um, Phantom Pain and I've got uh, Metal Gear Solid 5. All that mm. lot. And yeah, I can't... I can't praise those games enough. Um little tidbit on Metal Gear Solid 4, it did have the longest cutscene in the in Guinness Book of Records at one point. Yeah, it was like 22, 23 minutes, wasn't it? No, try two hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shows how much I'm paying attention. It was about two, the ending sequence was all together, include the credits and everything all together. It was about two hours, but it actually recently got beaten by Death Stranding, which is funny enough, another Hideo, Hideo Kojima game. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> the only way that Hideo Kojima can be beaten is by himself. <laughs> yeah. The only way you beat Hideo Kojima is by Hideo Kojima. So yeah. <laughs> pretty much it's one of them. So, but yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to Mass Effect the remaster. I I've already said I'm, I'm, I'm jokingly I'm going without food to get this game. Um, <laughs> I will save money that way to get it if I need to. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get it as soon as I possibly can. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, um, I, mean, I, I mean, it's a franchise that's near and dear to your heart. I mean, sort of like I've heard on like previous podcasts how much you you love that franchise. I mean, I guess I, 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 I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame you for wanting to get it, in all honesty. This is it. I mean, I do. I used to do yearly playthroughs of Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3 back to back. When I play Mass Effect, I can't just play... I'm going to go play Mass Effect 2. I can't do it. I mm. actually can't do it. I have to go go through Mass Effect 1, play all of that, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3. And I used to be one of these dickheads that used to go, right, I'm not playing this game because I can't get achievements. I used to be a proper achievement hoarder. <laughs> Mass Effect was one of the few games that I wasn't asked about achievements. Mm. So... You know, it, it's one of them. I I will play that to death. Now, like fours, and now I'll play that just for the for the not playing achievements. Um, just started, funny enough, not that long ago, a fours of one playthrough on the original Ooh. Xbox. So, and I've noticed as well, I'm actually going back and booting up the old Xbox because um, it doesn't run properly on the Xbox 360. It's slightly um, imperfect, and I don't like it. So I'm go- I've actually got the broken out the old OG Xbox. Yeah. I'm playing it on that. So it's fun times. <laughs> so and speaking of fun times, um, I um, yeah, I've been doing yeah. stuff with my Wii as well, which is um, fun. With your Wii. My Wii, yeah, we've been playing on the Wii. Oh right, fucking hell! <laughs> See, I was starting really... to worry there a second. Yeah, Shit. yeah. Don't, 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 don't worry. I've not been pissing hot. Don't worry. No, no. I was going to say you're sort of like you're scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to <laughs> video game technology. Oh no, no, no. Next week, the... turds. We're talking about <laughs> turds. No, 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 no. I was just saying. Like, I sent a picture saying I, I was going to touch on retro video games, but we're running a bit of short on time now. But. I was playing Virtuous Striker before, yes. 2002, and it's like it's such, it's like basically Virtuous Striker three, and it's one of my favourite football games of all time. Man. It's so simple; it's literally three buttons and a stick. It right. is absolutely brilliant. That's, that's, honestly, if you're talking about if, if you're talk, <laughs> if, talk, if you're talking about greatest football games of all time, you cannot be international superstar soccer on the Nintendo 64. Yes. Num- Honestly, it- you, 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 you cannot beat that game for the scenario mode alone. Yes, I, I think we've actually had this discussion, haven't we? Yeah. It did. ISS 64. <laughs> Yes, we have had that. Yeah. It's, it's just thinking about that moment. I just every time I think back, it's Scotland with a free kick against Czechoslovakia. Yes, yes. yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you've got the Gary McAllister lookalike stood over the ball. I can re- vision it perfectly. It's as I say, it's 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 a it's a football game that I I I preach to this day will never be beaten. I agree. It's just for the sheer fun factor and how many variety of ways that you can score in that game. <laughs> and the variety of ways you can get sent off in a game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. 
you think oh, it, you do. there's a game it, called Red Card Football, wasn't there? Oh, this yeah. Did, yeah, but this did that better. Oh, <laughs> oh, just karate kick people for the, like, for the, it's brilliant. It's, it's like you're playing with a team of Roy Keynes. Yeah, it's it's basically. amazing to play with. I mean, you just you just create your enemy the other side of the team, just fucking make a life of misery, don't you? <laughs> they did that. I did that this other day. Just then, while I was playing Virtua Striker. I've set up a little quick tournament against weak teams just for shits and gigs, just because I've not played it for years. So I thought I just want to score some goals, you know, get a good feel vibe going again. And I ended up playing a little tournament. I think I had Costa Rica in there. I was playing as England and Costa Rica. I think it was Uzbekistan and Thailand as teams against me. So it was like, it was sh- shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> and I was in the final against Thailand. And <laughs> That has never been said, ever. Ever, I know. <laughs> but it happened. It happened. Certainly it not happened. about fucking football. It, had, <laughs> it happened on my Nintendo Wii as of about three hours ago. And... Oh, I was just playing normally. The next thing you know, these Thai players are just sliding into the back of my players. It's like instant red card. I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> Three red Easy. cards later, and to the point where the system went, oh, hang on a minute. I can't keep doing this because my, like, this, this yeah. game hasn't been coded in with the exclusion rule. Uh-huh. So what happens is if it's a player's not been booked yet, they get booked, and then that is it. After that, they get waved off. <laughs> and that was it. Which, which was the exact opposite reaction with uh, ISS 64 which is as soon as you go to sort of like I don't know it was like six or seven men down basically the the, 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 the match just ends up being forfeit to whoever has the least amount of men on the field yeah it automatically ends up being 3-0 doesn't it and that's it yes. the game. Um, I've never, it's funny that it's an ISS game that actually brings me one of my favourite memories from the game um, I was playing as England again. It was like a, it was in a tournament, like a World Cup sort of thing. And I was playing Brazil, and I think I was three nil up at one point. And then I saw I got two players sent off, and then ended up like going three two down. And then I conceded another penalty, and then got another man sent off. So it was like I think it was like eight players against their full team, and it went into extra time. And I remember winning it. Um, like the last minute of extra time, right? With like another man sent off because I don't know what happened. I just got like four players sent off, and I was like, I, I remember that being one of the most hard fought football wins I've ever had on a video game, mm. and it was all my own doing. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I do, I do love myself old football games. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm partial to playing Kevin Keegan's player manager on the SNES. You know, oh, yeah, a bit of LMA manager as well. That was quite good back yeah. in its day. I actually have a legit copy of that upstairs. Oh, yes, so yeah, but yeah, I've never actually played it. I've got it upstairs, but never played it. So I was more into when well, back when I was having that the back end of the P of the PlayStation era, like PS1, I had a really crap PC, and my management game of choice was FA Premier League Football Manager. Which was EA's version of Football Manager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my days. And it ended up coded into Total Club Manager. Yeah. And that's my go-to. I Even to this day now, I still play like Total Club Manager 2005 every so often because you can set your own clubs up and things like that on it. It's brilliant. Mm. So, but yeah, that's retro gaming covered, I guess, as well. But yeah, um, yeah, it's been fun, guys. It's been a bit of a, been, what, Jesus Christ, nearly, nearly coming up to three hours. Fucking hey. Yeah. It's amazing how quick Something time flies like on Rad, yeah. <laughs> we still got it, lads. <laughs> <laughs> still got when we it. Have the right, when, the, when we have the right topics to go to. Exactly. <laughs> it, we could just flow. We could absolutely flow. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I think it's time for some plugs, and I think we better let our uh, debutantes our, you know, to go first. Oh, um, as usual, if you've enjoyed hearing my voice, as much as I enjoy hearing my own voice, you can find me on the Lost Art Podcasting and the Lost Art Wrestling, but also the Gunpowder Trees and No Plot Podcast, which is available on all good podcast providers. And avail- you can follow me on Twitter at RogarGTMP. There you go. And yes, I was doing the cat dance because I love hearing that every single time. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Lewis, go ahead. Yeah, um, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, on Twitch because I've mentioned sort of like 
at some point during this podcast that I'm a part-time Twitch streamer. Yeah, well, um, and you can also, it, yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, it's it, well, I say that because like every single sort of like incarnation of me, like on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, is basically under the same handle. Uh, it's basically <laughs> if you saw if you search loggers one hundred nine on just about like any of those free platforms, you're bound to find me. Um, it's also uh, very specific that you follow my YouTube channel because. Um, I mean, we're recording this on a Friday, but this coming Sunday on the 14th of February, I'm starting up a new podcast myself. Oh, nice. Um, it's basically, I'm part of this, um, I'm part of a great big massive gaming community called the Games Lair community. And like a couple of my mates are sort of like the founding fathers, mothers of sort of like this, this great big mass- massive gaming community. Um, and we very recently started up... Um, making podcasts of our own sort of like the moderators and the creators of like this discord group of sort of like, you know, well, it's been behind the scenes of like creating separate podcasts here and there. Um, so this Sunday, um, specifically on my YouTube channel. So if you make sure that you subscribe to loggers one Oh nine on YouTube, um, this coming Sunday, myself and another member of, um, my gaming community, we're going to be starting up a, a podcast, um, basically, entirely devoted to sort of like star wars ah fair play so if you're a if you're a star wars fan or sort of like a, a someone who's passionate about star wars it's worth subscribing to that because we're well it will be doing an introduction sort of like podcast um and then we'll just be diverting into like loads of stuff because there's loads of material to cover when it comes to movies uh tv shows and also games as well um, so it's worth worth following there as well. Um, also, if you're an avid gamer or you l- see yourself as being part of a gaming community, make sure that you're um, a member of the Game Slayer Discord. Um, basically, we're sort of like follow, uh, hovering over sort of like the 400 mark. Um, and when we get to 500 members on the Discord group, um, there's basically got like a great big massive um, giveaway, whether it be sort of like for PlayStation or Xbox. So it's it's worth becoming a member if you if you're looking at sort of like branching out into sort of like great big massive gaming community, and yeah, just make sure that you're following everything loggers one hundred and nine on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Awesome. Oh, we'll have to get onto that. Uh, and have you got anything you want to um, plug? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, no, you just, do. Uh, Come uh, yeah, on. Okay. Uh, follow my TikTok at the Annoying Husband. Um, it's. Uh, it's basically me just a, a, a doing stupid shit and annoying my wife, which is, as the lads know, is hilarious. Um, also, there is a fund for my wife, which uh, <laughs> if you want to donate to that. There's a fund for your wife. Fund. Fund. <laughs> if you want to donate to that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Although it would, glue it, in would, her hair? it would surprise me if people did start to like create a fun for her at this point because god help that woman i am the most irritating arsehole on the face of the earth i mean her parents just wish i'd murder her so, murder her so they could grieve properly you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> it's that sort of <laughs> fucking hell but i can, but yeah, tell, you're fr- I can tell you're a frankie boyle fan i really can tell you're yeah, a frankie okay. boyle fan <laughs> all my jokes are my own Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the only original shit I do is on that TikTok where I'm actually generally, I believe I'm quite funny. Uh, and that's sort of the problem. I think I'm very funny. Um, <laughs> I can only apologize um, to, to you, everyone listening, um, my wife, my mum, my sister. I love how this plugging thing's turned into more of an apology. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, give, just follow me, me TikTok. Me don't follow me sin. Instagram because I'm not likely to. Wasn't it? Like, yeah, uh, don't follow me on Facebook because I just share shit. Um, I'm not. I'm not on Twitter. I don't believe in it. I think it's wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's dirty. It's filthy. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it for me. I think. Yeah, awesome. I'm done. Awesome. Don't come to my house. Awesome. On that note, you can follow us on Twitter at UK RAD Podcast. <laughs> We're on Facebook. We had a Facebook page. There's not much on there at the minute, but, you know, with this, there might be soon. Uh, you can find us on all the good podcast catchers out there on Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, Apple Music, you name it. We're on there. we got YouTube as well. And, yeah, occasionally you can find me as Steve on Steve, on Gunpowder Trees and No Plot. Uh, obviously, you can find them like Bunkle said, at Trees and No. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it, lads. <laughs> You're the old, everyone does such nice, cool things, and there's me like, go and follow me TikTok. It's really depressing. <laughs> On the plus side, you're the only one with a TikTok, so that's cool. Yeah, it's your bang. No, it's not. No, it's not. Don't, don't ahead. you dare lie to me. Don't you dare. <laughs> you will tell me Cam Newton's a decent quarterback next. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, don't, oh, don't lie. Down. Don't patronize. I know what I mean, patronize, and I do not like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh god! On, on, on that, I'm gonna say, um, yeah. I've, I thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure as always, and we'll do this again very, very, very soon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've been um, allegedly sexy, definitely <laughs> stupid, <laughs> definitely stupid. I've been stowing away. Shh, shh. Be quiet. Be quiet. They'll find me. They'll find me. What are these outros? <laughs> <laughs> We didn't warn these people, did we? We this have is... our, we have, we have our, we have our sort of calling. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we have, it's we have very specific outros when we're I mean, <laughs> allegedly sexy. I don't want the word allegedly next to sexy. That's <laughs> awful. Well, you, you know what? Like you're hiding children you know in a wardrobe's not helping. Fuck you know me. what? Given, given your reaction, it just sort of like pays dividends to know that you don't listen to the fucking Phoenix Pod. Oh, oh, oh. Otherwise, you would have seen this coming. In my defence, I, I I don't find Peter K very funny. But... <laughs> I, 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 I've I've been the irritating. Oh, I got what's up? Bunkle's connection's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> ding 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 ding. Drops quicker than Katie Price in a men's toilet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, I'm not that I've been the irritating husband. The real not does on dark. <laughs> And I have been James D. Bunkel. Yep. And one last bit of advice. Don't get glue in your hair. Thank you for listening. Fucking morons. Good night. <laughs> My whole... <laughs>